awesome. Good okay, to go, we're... Chris. Okay, thank you very much. Well, welcome everybody to this, the final meeting of this triennium for this community board. Uh, it's been a hard, hard three years in regards to COVID and not being able to have our meetings at scheduled times and places and with having to have people in via Zoom. So hopefully now with the changes in regulations, the next triennium will be back to normal, which will be absolutely lovely. So do we have any apologies? I know we've got one from James Coots. Are there any others? No? No. Well, can I move that the apologies be accepted? Can I have a seconder, please? Thanks, Marilyn. Right, now we need declarations of interest in re related to any items on the agenda. So if we've all got any interest in any of the applications, uh, can you please say now, I'll say mine first, and then you can put up your hands and, and declare, and I'll unmute you and they'll declare yours. I've, I've got a uh, conflict with the RSA and Elevate All Tacky. So I won't be taking part in any of the discussion or voting on those, those two applications. Are there any other conflicts of interest? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the um, committee of the OPG, so I won't be taking part in, in the uh, OPG application. Are there any others? Marilyn, you're on the food bank. We've got one from the food bank or not? We haven't, have we? Um, Shelley also has her hand up. Okay. Shelley. Uh, well, when we... Um, last met, I was on the board of the OT College um, Board of Trustees, but I didn't reapply for that or stand for that, so I'm no longer on the Board of Trustees. Who's that? Who was that speaking? Do you know who it is? <laughs> I think it was coming from the background by Heinz Shelley, perhaps. Oh, okay. Fabulous. Well, if there's no more declarations of interest, that's absolutely fabulous. Okay, so now is Steve Finlay there to do the PP20 update? Yeah, I'm here, Christine. Oh. Yep. Oh, great, Steve. Well, welcome to this, our last meeting of the Triennium. And I'd like thank to you. thank you from myself and the rest of the board for all the hard work you've put in with the expressway and coming and reporting to our meetings with and sharing all the vast knowledge and information that you have. Oh, look, it's a team effort, um, Chris. So, yep. But thank you. <clears throat> um, you'll... Um, Steve, I've um, made you a co-host. So if you'd like to share your, if you wanted to share your screen with the PowerPoint, you can. Yep. I'll just give that a go now. Um, can you guys see that? Nope. No, hang on a sec. I'll just... Um, not really used to Zoom. We use Teams, which seems considerably easier. Just bear with me. Right, can you see that one? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Steve. Okay. So, um, listen, what we'll do is um, I will just take you um, through a slide presentation that's been put together just to give you an update on, um, on where things are at. Um, with the expressway currently. So these are all reasonably recent pictures. So um, generally we start in the north and head south. So that picture there, um, that's the, what will be the northbound on-ramp from uh, Bridge 2 at the very north end of the job there. So you can see, can, can you see my um, mouse moving there? So that there, that's bridge two, uh, bridge three over the railway line. Um, P 
pictures um, both at, at north and southern extremes of the project. So on the left, um, that's a view of the temporary road that we have in place up the northern end, sort of opposite Taylor's Road there. Um, the picture on the south, on the right hand side is at the very southern end of, of this project. You can see um, to Kofi Road, just sort of heading east-west in the bottom right-hand side of the expressway there. So from the south, oh, sorry, from the north heading south, there's um, the existing Taylor's Road, the new bit that we've uh, constructed here, and there's the current State Highway 1 alignment on uh, the temporary road. So we've just started some more tie and work up there um, as at the beginning of this week, which will continue on for about a month through there. Um, there's, a, there's a good aerial shot looking from the north, um, looking south from the north. So you can see bridge one there, which is over the Waidahu stream, um, all the way south. You can see bridge three there, bridge two, the expressway. You can see bridge four, which is Rahui Road and the expressway heading to the south, through the south there. So even from that shot there, you can see that the majority of the pavement through there is, um, it's got all the layers of structural AC on it. Uh, just some, 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 uh, just some shots around the bridge one area of construction taking place over the last sort of four weeks which is uh, shoulder, primarily shoulder and median construction between the asphalt. Um, same sort of shots here, but this is with the AC going down. Another shot just north of Bridge 2. So there's the existing State Highway 1 alignment through there. If you've been through there in recent weeks, you'll know that we're annoying a lot of the motorists just at the... Uh, the north end of bridge two just with some tie-in works there but it's all progressing pretty well through there as well um, the picture on the left that's the shot of rahui road um, with county road here and we're finishing off some works behind the uh, the milk station property there at the moment um, the picture on the right it's a great shot um, from the Otaki River, just the northern side, you can see the Winstones Quarry, the bottom of the picture, looking south. So you can clearly see the northbound off-ramp there, which is being constructed, and the northbound on-ramp there from Otaki Gorge Road. Just some pictures on the ground at that point. So there's the off-ramp. If you're heading north from... Um, from Wellington, I guess. You want to get off at Otaki, that's where you get off. Um, another shot of it in the middle there, you can see there, but on the right-hand side of the middle photo, you can see the the uh, southbound on-ramp um, from Otaki Gorge Road. Uh, the two pictures on the right-hand side, um, you can see that's looking south, uh, the Tahoro overbridge there, both of those looking south. Couple of aerial shots of the Otaki Gorge Road. So Otaki Gorge Road's here. If you've been through there in recent days, you'd see that we've pretty much completed the roundabout. Um, it's just ready for planting now. So once again, there's the southbound on-ramp. Just at the top of the picture there, you can see the Houtry Road link. Um, the expressway lanes here, and here's the northbound off-ramp again. There's a nice shot of the Tahoro um, overbridge there, or what we call Bridge 8, with the existing state highway there, um, expressway there. And there's the uh, the stream, the, which name just escapes me at the moment, that um, runs through here. Mangoni stream, sorry. Yep. So all that works progress through here, all the way through here. The AC is all completed. The barriers are in. Um, so we're really just waiting um, to start the Amalka works through that whole section, which is the final surfacing. 
A little bit further south, you can just see on your left here, School Road, uh, intersection with Gear Road here. Once again, um, all the expressway, all the AC, et cetera, is done. The barriers have been installed. In some cases, the wire rope's tensioned up. In other cases, it's not, um, purely just to, to allow us access through the full length of the job. Uh, further south again, it's the um, Mary Crest Rail Overbridge. So um, that's the north heading south that way. It's a bit of an interesting picture, that one. It looks a bit like this wing wall here is um, not quite built very well, but it's just an optical illusion, so don't panic about that. Um, you can see the existing local arterial road through here, which is State High one at the moment. Um, the thing to note in this picture is you can see the shared path all the way through there is progressing um, at the back as well. So good progress there. Further south still, so this is what we call Bridge 10, which is the underpass for the local road through here. Um, and then the smaller underpass here, this is the underpass for the shared path, which will come out to this point here, this section is yet to be signalised. So there'll be sets of traffic lights there, um, which are actuated by pedestrians, much the same as in Otaki Township, but also um, this intersection here for people wanting to come out of that road there. Once again, you can see the majority of all the asphalt's done through here, which is good. Another panoramic shot there, so Bridge 9, looking all the way to the south here to the end of the project, which is sort of down here. Uh, this shot here, is, uh, this is Te Harpur Road, just there. Um, the expressway lanes here, this dark shade here, that's, the, that's a section of a Mogpa that we laid um, just prior to winter, actually. So um that's the final surfacing that will go on top of the the asphalt over the entire length of the expressway there's another shot of it so with Tihapra road here you can see the amalka there railway line um behind to the east An aerial shot of um the end of the project there once again there's tokofi road um, in time, that section of road will link up with the LAR once we've moved the traffic onto the expressway. Um, so that's sort of the final tie-in works that, we, that we're, we're starting to work on at the moment. If you've been through there in recent days, you would have seen we've started removing some barriers and changing the, the, um, the traffic management through there in preparation for that work. And that's it, Chris. Thanks a million, Steve. That's absolutely great. Um, and once again, just thank your team from all of us for the great job they're doing. Uh, who would have thought with that first, you know, turf turning that I went to where Nathan took that show and Simon Bridges did that shovel of soil. Yes. That it's gone so far. And, and it's been a reasonable amount of time, but it seems to have flown by. So, and you guys are doing a great job under lots of hard conditions as well so just thank the whole team from us all oh no appreciate that we'll um pass that on at one of our uh, pre-starts tomorrow morning yes absolutely <laughs> okay thank you all right thanks a million okay. does anyone have any questions i'd like to ask steve you can drop your your presentation down if you want steve that's yeah yeah yep. anyone have any questions Oh, Cam. Yes, the, the perennial question of uh, the actual opening date, Steve. Is that something that's allowed to be out of the box now, or is that still a secret? Oh, look, I'm surprised that one came up, Cam. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, look, I, I guess the, the headlines are, um, as we've said previously, we are um, still targeting to open... Um, prior to Christmas. That's certainly our aim. Um, as Chris said, you know, we've had a, a pretty rugged um, winter yep, with the, the rain, etc. Um, so 
Um, is it going to open bef before Christmas? I can't really tell you that at the moment. And you might think that that's a bit bizarre, but uh, we've still got quite a few things to work through. It's certainly still the aim. Thanks, Steve. Right. Any, any other questions? I can't see any hands up because I can only see eight people. So no other questions? Well, if there's no other questions, thank you for, again, Steve. Thank you very, very much. Um, you can Pleasure. go and have, have your dinner or whatever it is you haven't done this time of night. That's absolutely. Okay, thanks, thanks, thanks for that. Again. Okay, okay bye. Bye-bye. Right. Yeah. Have we got the, the next on my agenda is the presentation of the petition for the Seawood Extension Bank. Is the gentleman present who's going to? That's Steve, to if he's online. Is that, is that you, Steve, under Janet Lang? Oh, yeah. Give it okay. A okay. Do you want to unmute, unmute Steve? And I'll mute myself. And well, welcome, Steve. To Thank you. Can you hear me now? The, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Good up. So, um, yeah, the, the Seaward Extension Bank uh, has been what we're wanting is the community board to support the, our uh, community uh, in our petition to the Greater Wellington Regional Council to build the Seaward Extension Bank. Um, for those that aren't aware, that's um, the entrance way to the river mouth uh, in Otaki River, uh, where Marine Parade uh, ends. And then it goes from being tarmacked onto the uh, beach area and down to the river mouth. And that's been eroded over many years. Uh, thousands of vehicle movements over it and so on have, have dropped it down. And in the 90s, the council, Greater Wellington Regional Council, um, uh, planned to build a bank there that, that reinstates the land and uh, would tie in to the dunes uh, at each end, um, uh, being around about 100 metres long and uh, about a metre high, 1,200 high uh, at the highest point in the centre. Um, this isn't a wall, it's a ramp. So uh, vehicle access will continue to be um, provided. Uh, for vehicle traffic to get to the river mouth to carry on uh, what their customary uh, rights, etc. Um, but the uh, it, in the nineties it was designed. Uh, two years ago it was number six on the list of to dos, so it had risen somewhat, but it stalled around six. We've been agitating for it with. Um, uh, through council to get uh, it over the line and funded. Um, the impact of the not building it is to allow the Rangiuru area to uh, flood when the, you've got a, either a high tide or a high river flow. It backs up, meets itself and comes back over the lagoon and floods the properties here. So we petitioned and got 35. Um, I've been away a lot, but that was quite a big number uh, to get 35 uh, people to say yes. And that petition I've lodged with uh, Samara. Um, it is Samara, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and um, I want, uh, I was advised by Guru Nathan, a mayor, is he still mayor? Yeah, Mayor Guru Nathan, uh, to, that this was the best course of action. If we're going to do a petition, lodge it with our community board first and get them to agree to send it on to uh, the Greater Wellington Regional Council. And so that's what I'm asking for or what we're asking for. So any questions? Does anybody have any questions of uh, Steve? Uh, Marilyn. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, 
obviously a, a lot of thoughts gone into this. I'm just wondering, has there been any sort of engineering type reports or anything to show um, if this is going to be effective or not? I know I've been part of conversations about seawalls before and the concern is that the sea actually undermines mm -hmm. the, the walls and things like that and they become actually more of a hindrance than a help it, in, in some instances. I'm just wondering what sort of, what sort of um, you know, what yeah, so they, about that? It, it's it's not seen as a sea wall. It's just a continuation of a backline of dunes. It's not anticipated that there will be frequent uh, water erosion around it. Um, it's only when the lagoon overtops, uh, and so it's to protect that or stop that from uh, impacting on the housing. Most of the time, it will be a dry. Uh, ramp and a continuous dune line that goes behind the uh, new house uh, that was built. I mean, something for else to consider is that it will also uh, protect the tip. So there was a, a and the Ortaki tip at one time, uh, this is before my time living here, uh, but 30 plus years ago was uh, a tipping went on there. And it's important that that is also protected. Uh, so the lagoon overtopping would come into our houses. Uh, so what this is, is a bank, not a wall. Uh, and this, that's not a moot point. You know, I mean, that's, that's an important distinction yeah. um, because it's not keeping constant tides back. Um, it's only to reinstate the erosion that's happened through all the vehicles. It's very popular down there, understandably. It's a beautiful area and a lot of camper vans going. These are impactive on, on the road. Occasionally, the council fills in the hole, uh, but then it just lowers again. So this has all been sort of planned out. I've got a, the, there's the, you know, Banks, uh, Kyle Christensen uh, drew it all up. And he did a lot of, you know, height surveys and the like. Um, these are all on council. Uh, he's an engineer. Uh, and he's an engineer. So yes, they weren't considered to be, it's not, a, uh, that's not the usual sort of um, boundary between sea and land. It's, Have you had conversations with the regional council about it? Yeah, um, with our uh, councillor Penny Gaylor. Um, and she uh, has viewed the site. She, we took her around and she saw what it was that we were talking about. And I think it's partly her encourager that may well have seen it rise from six to two. Um, but she might need the support of others uh, and to, to actually move it forward uh, and get it over the line. Uh, it's probably not contentious um, Kyle thought that it was a reasonable sum of money. It's not sort of millions. Um, though obviously it is a robust uh, bank because it's going to have to be driven over. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Marilyn. Marilyn. Cam. Um, hi there, Steve. And just sorry, Cam. Cool. Um, so has there been any recent feedback outside of um, Penny Gaylor from Greater Wellington themselves as to why they haven't done this already, seeing as it's been planned for a while? Um, I had... Uh, uh, Mayor Gurunathan doesn't work for Greater Wellington, does he? He's the Carpety Coast uh, Mayor. Um, but no, so I think the answer is, is no. I, I don't... Uh, I had some contacts there, but they've moved you know they've they've moved into other areas and i've lost contact so i don't have a recent um contact person if i need to i would go through penny uh to the river to yeah the river so um we haven't collected friends of the river uh particularly on this petition uh, but they're also very supportive because obviously they do a lot of planting around that area and they don't want to see it all washed away. And they know about it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Uh, would it be your suggestion, Cam, that we do? 
Uh, um, why is it? I mean, from a community point of community board point of view, it's very easy for us to say yes, we support it. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's a particular reason why Greater Wellington is actually dead against it, um, no, it would be not. useful to know that as well. No, um, I, I believe that it? they're not. It's just a prioritisation issue. Right. You know how hard it is to always okay. weigh up what you where you're going to spend your money. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so there is that potential that there, they, they understand may not it, have it as a priority. But we want to just get it over that line. Yeah. And that's what we need the encouragement of the board for. Right. Thanks, so, Steve, um, it's, it's Chris Paps here, Chair of the Board. Um, okay. Are you actually expecting any funding or financial help from the Council, from the Carpenter Council? Um, no, we hadn't. Uh, well, we had actually thought of making a request to Council to uh, enable us to do a much uh, broader sweep of the whole community, all the Rangiuru households, and also do a, a find out who owns a lot of the houses that are vacant uh, and ask them what they uh, think about it. Uh, but then we were also told that the initial stage, once it gets over the line, GWRC will have a community engagement as, as part of its first steps. Um, so they don't want to just go in there with the bulldozers, but they actually want to talk to the community about what they're going to do. That's my understanding. Um, and it, is, there, is there any ballpark figure being thrown around as to uh, the approximate cost this is going to pay for? <laughs> yeah, it was something like 60,000, I think, uh, when it was first, and then it went to 200,000, and that was two years ago. Um, so uh, you probably have an idea. Uh, yeah, now things change. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it, it, it seemed low uh, cost. Um, it's quite a uh, um, contained build. Uh, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's unlikely to be problematic. Okay. Sh Shelley, you have something to ask? Uh, hi, Stephen. Um, um, so have you engaged in the long-term plan process or the annual yeah. plan strategy? You have, okay. So it's in the long-term plan. It is, is it yeah. funded in the long-term plan? Yes, it is. Um, and, uh, yeah. Okay. It's, it's just on a priority list. Being pushed out, yeah. And, we, and well, things leapfrog it. <laughs> Uh, and we wanted to, to get over the line okay. because it's just so important. And it's, it's yeah. one of those things that you do now and then in a few years' time, you go, Phew, thank goodness yeah. we did that because yeah. we've just saved ourselves a whole lot of pain. Yeah. All right. Any, any other questions? Right. Well, um, I can, what I suggest is that I perhaps move that we accept the, accept the petition and perhaps lay it on the table and note that perhaps the incoming community board take it up because we may or may not be around to follow through with this. Mm -hmm. So at least if it's, of course, it's, yeah. it's in the minutes um, and it can be noted and for, a few, for the future community board to perhaps follow up on. Mm -hmm. But at least if we, we've accepted the petition you know, on your behalf. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if I, if I can have a seconder on that, please. Marilyn, thank you. Is there any discussion on that now? Can't see everybody. No, no discussion. Okay, then that's carried. Everyone, all those in favor? Little handies, thank you. Mm -hmm. I can't see Shelley, but I'm sure she's got her hand up. Okay, that's carried. So that's going to be, we've accepted your petition, Stephen on behalf of the, the residents down, down by the beach and, um, and it'll be noted in the minutes to be held over for the, for the next community board to perhaps take up with Greater Wellington or wherever it's going to go to mm -hmm. from there. I understand the idea, you know, that the electoral processes can uh, slow things down. Do you think that we ought to just, uh, you know, because of your experience, send it through to the Greater Wellington Regional Council anyway as a petition? Or oh, no. do we, 
by all means, I'm pretty sure that's, that's totally up to you. And you can say right. that you've got this presence boards that we've accepted the petition. Right. So I'm sure, I'm sure you can do that. Right, okay. I, I, I almost certainly will. I'll, I'll talk to people and, and that might well be what we do. Okay, and then perhaps bring it back to the new board Mm -hmm. Just to see what 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 can be done which, next next which way. Which will anyway. be convened in after in October. Way. No, November will be the first meeting, I think. Right. Yeah. Okay. Steve, okay. I can let you know when that new date is. Thank you, Sima. Yeah, appreciate that. Okay. Steve, thank you very That's much. Steve. Thank you. Nice, nice meeting you. Okay. All okay. The best. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Right. Public speaker. Okay, we are now moving into public speaking time please note you have three minutes to speak please be quick and don't go over your three minutes we have a lot of people to get through and it could end up being a very late night if people tend to go over their three minutes so who have we got first samara so the first person on the list is andy fraser from otaki college and te puna oranga or otaki on behalf of them as well okay and he is online i've seen him now I've seen him too. Uh, well, welcome, Andy. Welcome, welcome to another board meeting, Andy. You're going to be a familiar face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kia ora, Chris. Tēnā te mihi ki a koe te kai whakahaere o te uh, rōpū o, o te āpore. Hoi anō uh, ki nga kai mahi. Nei rā te mihi ki a koutou. Just want to firstly acknowledge you, Chris, and the um, current community board for all your efforts over the past three years and for the support that you've offered, not only the community, but in particular, Otaki College and the young people of our town. So um, thank you very much for that. Um, thank you. My, my segue really in is that this application is a joint application from, um, when I say Otaki College, Otaki College on behalf of Kahui Tokotoko Otaki, which is our combined um, schools um, in, in our Otaki area, um, in, our, in our little area plus Tihoro School. Um, along with tu, tu, um, Tupuna Oranga or Otaki, which, as you know, is the health collective which is mandated by Nga Hapu or Otaki. Um, they recently um, have been subcontracted by Kahui Tokotoko to um, help us manage student absenteeism. Um, we're not calling it truancy. It has some pretty negative overtones, so it's really... Um, linking back up with students that have um, really started to struggle to get back into education um, through a lot of things, but um, exacerbated by COVID-19 mainly. Um, we have a Kaiarahi Mātauranga Fano or Fano Education Navigator that's got a focus on um, meeting with Fano of students who have low attendance rates and try and um, build connections with that whānau and that young person or people. And then from there, build a plan around how we might support that return into what we might call uh, mainstream education and or look at other opportunities and options for that young person to at least gain some um, education before moving on into the work sector. Or it could also be that they're actually getting them um, in a position to be work ready. Um, one of the things we've also found in Otaki is, and we haven't escaped it and it's happening right across the country, is that also many of our young people um, haven't returned full time to school because they're actually having to work to actually put food on the table um, for their whanau um, to meet with the, high, um, with the rising cost of living as well as um, rent. So there's lots of um, things going on out there um, running educational facilities these days is pretty um, difficult and um, having someone in this role is particularly useful. What we have found, however, is that um, the person that we have employed through Ministry of Education funding just That's cannot time. meet the current demand. And so our application is really about trying to get extra time for this person to be working with young people in Fano to get them back in education and um, potentially have brighter futures. Kia ora. Thanks, thanks for that, Andy. That was that was a very in-depth report for us. Thank you very much. Just a question from me: if if we can't or can't fund the whole amount, would a smaller amount 
be, be beneficial? Well, looking at the number of people on here without them throwing things through the glass, I better nod and say, absolutely, Chris, we'll accept a smaller amount um, <laughs> because obviously there's great community interest and everyone's got a good story. Um, look, I, I think the bottom line for us is that any, any extra help is extra help. Any extra help that we get is extra help for Fano. Any extra help for Fano is help for our young ones. So um, we, we'll just, you know, receive anything with gratitude and we would continue to go and um, hunt down other funds um, that might be around there to continue with what we believe is a pretty important role in our community. No, oh, thanks, Andy, and, th and thank you very much. Your enthusiasm for the community is just outstanding. You really throw everything into it. Does anybody else have any questions of, of Andy? I can only see Cam and Marilyn on screen, so... No, no other question. Marilyn, do you have a question? No. Cam? No. And I can't see. Oh, well, thank you, Andy. You, you don't have to stay. You can you can go home for your dinner. <laughs> well, thank you, Chris. It feels like it's been a long day from 6.30 a.m. this morning, so oh. I think I might just depart. So, okay, then, and we'll, and we'll be in touch. You're right. Good on you. Thank you. Okay. And good luck to everyone else. Thank you. Thank, thanks, out. Andy. So, Chris, just to mention to all the people that are in, in, in the meeting that once you've spoken, you're more than welcome to log off. Um, someone will be in contact with you um, in the next couple of days. There are a few things on our agenda, so if you don't want to hang around, you can um, jump off. Um, the next person on the list is Kirsty Doyle from the Ōtaki Promotions Group. Hi, everyone. Um, well, yeah, like, like Samara said, it's Kirsty here from the Otaki Promotions Group. I've applied for some, we have applied for some funds to continue with a Christmas project, which um, we have done for a couple of years. There's three parts to the project. It goes throughout pretty much the entire month of December. Um, the first part is a, is a business promotion where um, local businesses put um, Christmas displays in their windows for the people to, for the communities to see. Um, the second part of the project is a residential map. So we um, put a map together with all the different um, houses, including the business um, lights that, uh, so people can drive around the community and have a look at um, the different lights. And the third, which is a new part, um, we we put together Christmas Wonderland, which we held at Ōtaki College, and that was open for four days just before Christmas. People, um, mainly, it was mainly younger people came through and had a look at the wonderful, it was actually a really, it was a pretty awesome display. Um, and the people that came in, if they could afford, they gave us a koha, and the money collected was donated to the Ōtaki Food Bank um, to go out towards the community. Um, the three the three parts actually work quite well in together. We found that a lot of the people would come and have a look at the Christmas lights display and then go on to have a look and drive around and have a look at the different um, the different house displays. Um, it's just really a feel good community project. Um, the people that have come along have really enjoyed it and this is just applying for funds in the in the hope that we can create something um, pretty magnificent. Um, yeah. Any questions, really? I I don't know what else to say. I'm not. I, there's no way I'll talk as long as Andy. Not a chance. <laughs> I don't think anybody will. Thanks, <laughs> Kirsty. That was really that's really good. And and you guys do a fantastic job, and it, and it brightens up old tacky, and it's a really great project. So, Shelley, you have a question. No, just that it's a great um, initiative and it's really cool um, the things that Otaki Promotions put on that brings the community together. It's awesome. Thanks, Shelley. Uh, anyone else have any questions or comments to make on this application? Can't see any hands. Okay, thank you very much, Kirsty. Someone will be someone will be in touch. Awesome, oh, thanks. Awesome. The next person on the list is Laura Lavery. Oh, kia ora. Uh, yeah, so I'm just applying for any amounts, really, that um, I'm able to get. 
uh, to help fund for the basketball court down at Otaki Beach. Um, it's it's basically it's sitting there and it's just uh, wasting away. Um, and yeah, the youth really need this. Um, basketball is extremely popular in Otaki at the moment, and it gets used every day. Um, you know, the young ones love it, but they would love it more if it had a smoother surface, uh, possibly another hoop down the other end if we could. Um, and we've also got, you know, uh, a lot of locals. I put it on a local Facebook page just to get some feedback. Um, and I had hundreds of people, you know, agreed with it, said that they would love to see it all done up. Um, not one person was against it. Um, we did get feedback that the seagulls dropping pippies are on it. Um, yeah, that can be a bit of a pain, but I mean, everyone that uses it uh, will be more than happy to take a broom with them and sweep it down first. Um, yeah, and it'll just be, it'll just bring so much more atmosphere um, and just bring more people down there. Um, even if we have an ice cream truck sitting down there, food trucks. Um, yeah, it's what our youth need um, in Otaki because, you know, we're literally losing them and they need that connection and that bond and, you know, just that happiness around them. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank, thanks, Dory. We, we actually had this this come up a few years ago, probably in my first training, as, no, it wasn't, it was before I was chair, my first training on the board, and you're right about the seagulls, and the only solution to the seagulls was the fact of putting up a netting over the top of the court, and that was just totally prohibitive cost-wise, it was going to cost absolutely hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that, and at that stage, we were tossing up whether to put the half court at Hurutai Park or down the beach. And down Hurutai Park won out mainly because of a safety factor and the fact of the seagulls and the weather and that it's be more likely to be used more months of the year than down the beach. So it's more, to, this is more parks and open spaces and an annual plan thing than, than for the community board. But um, we'll leave it open for everybody else to ask you some questions and just see see where we go. But uh, yeah, I think I'd, I'd encourage you to perhaps try and put it in the annual plan. But anyway, who's uh, Cam? Hi, Cam. No, Shelley was first. Chris, she put her hand up first. Tamara, yeah. you can un unmute yeah, no. Shelley. Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. Uh, no, yeah, the same kind of thing, Laura, is that I'm not sure if you know what resurfacing would cost, but it's probably way beyond this budget and would be more likely to be an annual plan, long-term plan type of project. Um, yeah, so I haven't actually looked at the cost. I'm still working out, you know, what would be a better surface. Um, but literally at this point, anything. And I mean, we are, a lot of locals have come to me and said, you know, we are more than happy to give up our time also. Um, just, you know, as long as it's a smooth surface, so there's no other maintenance of weeds and that coming through. Uh, yes, it probably will be a continuous um, cost, but it shouldn't have to be much. Um, and it will honestly get used like no tomorrow, all the time, down there. So you live in Tehoro Beach, not Otaki Beach, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, but I am originally from, oh, I used to live in Otaki. My um, parents live out Otaki Beach down Manuka Street. Okay. Yeah, it's just uh, to resurface something that big is probably quite beyond the budget that we've got. That's all. Uh, yeah, well, we were actually, before uh, I decided to apply for this grant, I was actually going to um, get in contact with concrete doctors or, you know, any businesses in Otaki and 
we were all just going to put our hands in and just do it ourselves. It's a council asset. You wouldn't be allowed to do that, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cam. Um, so yes, thank you very much, Laura, for the application. Just with having, because of the, um, the funds does really <laughs> does really require a um, an amount on there. Um, it was very difficult to process the application, um, and I've seen the the thread on um, the OTK three six four. Um, I've certainly got a few likes on it, 88 likes and 65 um, comments on it. So certainly some people there are very passionate about it. And it's something we may be able to look at with the new board in terms of talking to parks and services and, and what can, improvements can be put into the plan um, and whether the council can actually allocate some money to it. Mm -hmm. So sorry, that's not a question, it's more of a statement. <laughs> yep, yeah, thank you. Okay, well, thanks, Laura. I mean, I can remember as, as a probably about a six year old, there used to be a roller skating rink there, and I used to come, to come visit my great grandparents and, and go down there and roller skate. So that's been it's been around a very long time. But as the other two board members said, it's more a, an annual plan application and more a parks and, and open spaces. So bearing that in mind, just you know, it, it's a good idea. We, we, we fully support the idea and the fact that it is a great space. But as, as Shelley said, uh, our funds don't actually stretch to that. And, um, and we would certainly be supportive of, of, of something happening there anyway. But it'd be something to bring back to the new board and the new triennium, perhaps. Okay, yep. Can I just Shall add oh, hold on, Shelley's got something to say. Can I just add also, Laura, that land is now actually technically under a road stopping um, procedure because it's not actually... Um, a reserve it's the council is going through that process it's a long process so it's really difficult for the council to do anything on land that is not technically theirs and so that would hold that up too there's you know there is money there's been money set aside for quite a while since I first came on the board which is six years ago before that there's been quite a bit of money set aside and it has increased to for a deep beach development but because of the road stopping process, which is actually still in the process, they can't actually do anything with that. Um, so it's really kind of a little bit hard. It can certainly go into a long-term plan or it can be proposed in an annual plan, but right now the council can't do anything with it anyway, as I understand, and Samara might be able to, or um, Janice might be able to clarify that. Okay, thank you. Right. Okay. Thank. Thank you very much, Laura, for your your application, and um, it's given us food for thought anyway. So All thanks right. a lot. Okay. Thank, is, you. thank you. So next person on the list is Cameron from Woke Budgeting. Cameron. Oh, kia ora koutou. Um Yeah, my name's Cameron. I am a um, guy that lives down at Otaki Beach. Well, soon to. I'm building a house there and it's taking forever. But anyway, um, I've applied for some funding to um, start a, um, a bit of a finance uh, program, literacy program for uh, our youth of Otaki. Um, not so long ago, I published a book called Woke Budgeting, which is essentially um, a book that talks about um, how to start off your budgets, how to um, navigate the ex ex extensively rising living costs um, and learn about investing, buying your first house, um, all sorts of kind of things. Um, uh, what we call side hustles and all that kind of stuff to bring in as much income as possible. Um, I've received an incredible amount of feedback over the last two or three months since this has come out and had multiple requests for programs from Citizens Advice Bureau and others um, that, that, you know, they want to see some sort of program where this can be delivered to um, youth. Uh, what I wanted to do was essentially start this and pilot it in Ōtaki, which is, you know, my hometown, and I want to um, be able to offer it for free to Otaki college students um, and a, a, a provider here in Otaki as well, which would see um, this eff effectively going through up to about a third of Otaki households, which I think would be really, really um, beneficial. 
Um, it is something that is not limited to just our youth. I think these are lessons that any, everyone can learn. Um, these are things that, you know, I've, I've had feedback from um, yeah, as young as 11 years old and, and, and up to, I think I had an 83 year old read it and take something from it. So I think that's um, really important. Um, the program would essentially deliver these books uh, for free to the students, uh, but also have a program where I would run some workshops and go in depth about how to set up your budget, how to set our bank accounts, all those kind of things, learning about compound interest, learning about term deposits, learning about all sorts of things that are really key to building um, not only personal wealth, but generational wealth and making sure that they have the financial literacy to navigate this, this future that they're um, arriving in, essentially. Um, yeah, like I said, this will, be, this will be a pilot program and um, I'm really keen to um, to get this cracking. I'm applying as um, an individual at the moment, but we're also um, creating this as, as a sort of um, charitable organisation as well. Um, yeah, I welcome any questions. Right, uh, anybody, was that your hand up, Marilyn? Okay, Marilyn. Thanks very much, Cameron. Uh, it sounds like a, a really good program and well done for, for getting it to this point. I'm just wondering, you, you're talking about um, getting it to the students in Otaki College. Have you actually spoken with the college? Have you got, it in, have you got a foot in the door there? Are you able to get in there? Yeah, so I was at the Kapiti Coast Youth um, Career Expo where I spoke to a number of people from Otaki College. I'm really terrible with names, so I'm sorry that I can't tell you, but I, there were a couple of teachers there um, who I spoke to who, who were actually quite keen. I think a few of them bought the book, but they, they were quite keen on seeing it um, come into the college. Um, it was. I also spoke with other local organisations there as well. So yes, there's definitely a foot in the door um, for a lot of them there. Um, and I've got um, some emails of interest and, and um, expressions of support for the program as well. Thank you. Uh, who was next, Cam? Oh, I think it was Cam. Madam Chair, um, Shelley had her hand up next. Is she? She's, she keeps popping off my screen, so I don't actually see her. <laughs> Sorry, Shelley, but you keep disappearing. Okay, Shelley. It's only because I'm trying to eat my tea with that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Cameron, you've got a letter of support here from Sophie Hanford. Have you applied to the Paikakariki Community Board for any money to get no, this up to the No, okay. I haven't, no. Okay. Um, so I actually rang Andy Fraser to, and he hadn't actually spoken to you. No, I haven't spoken to Andy. Um, Andy, I've only spoken to teachers at the school. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, kia ora, Cameron. Nice name, by the way. Oh, I agree. <laughs> um, just a quick question. So you've um, written and published this book. Um, mm. What's your expertise in the financial side of things? Yes, yeah, so I, well, I, I um, the complete disclaimer across the book and the program is I'm not a financial advisor. Um, however, I am someone that is kind of basing off their lived experience. So I'm 25 years old and have now um, I'm building my um, third house. Um, I have received no money or support from parents or other um, aspects of uh, such, and I've um, self-taught um, lessons in the financial game, I guess, um, over the last couple of years. Um, I am the treasurer of the Otaki Montessori, and um, I also have um, places like Cigna Insurance and Apex um, interested in um, partnering with me in terms of a national, um, I guess, sponsorship deal because they see the value in this in terms of um, the, the actual lessons it teaches. So it is kind of, while I'm not a financial advisor, the, the topics and um, the way that they're discussed in the, in the program are, um, I guess, verifiable. They're like, um, that they are, um, yeah, appropriate. Okay, um, and a fairly blunt question. In terms of the book itself, you have yep. written it and you're wanting us to purchase, um, by yep. all basically pay for 600 of them. Yep. Are these being provided at cost or is there a slight profit? Or is it, the, there, is a, there is, a, there is yep. a slight profit. Um, so the um, books cost about $12 per book and I'm providing them at wholesale at um, $16 per book. 
Okay. Thank you. That's all from me. Cool. Shelley, do you have another question? Okay, go for it. I'm just wondering if you've had any contact with Māori Land who run, uh, run programs for youth and also the Rangatahi program that got some funding in Ōtaki um, a year or so ago. And also we've got uh, other colleges, Whakatūpuranga and Tereto. Have you had any contact with them? Uh, no, I haven't um, because it, two reasons. It's been fairly early days, um, but secondly, my main job is as a principal advisor um, for MSD and my, my role actually sits in the team that um, delivers He Tamarangatahi funding. Um, they have received that funding, so I can't um, go in there and talk to them about that. I, I, I don't want there to be any conflicts of interest, so that's the primary reason I haven't done that. Um, my aim was to seek funding first, and once um, I had a, a certain amount, I can then go, okay, cool, we can deliver this amount, and then go out to offer it to them for free without having any sort of conflict of interest. Anything else, Shelley? Yeah, okay. Thanks, thanks, Cameron. That's um that's very interesting. Gosh, 25 and three properties. Shelley, <laughs> I have, I have Shelley, another, Shelley. I have another question. Good. Sorry, Chris. Okay, okay Shelley. Shelley. 600 books. There's not that many students at Otaki College. No, there's not. Um, so there's I think it was uh just, uh, just over 500 yeah so i've allocated about another 100 for the um otaki pro um rangatahi provider as well okay oh hold on right so if there's no more questions thank you very much cameron cool thanks guys okay thank you right. bye. bye next person on the list is bryony rogers Um, I'm Bryony and can you hear me okay yeah? Yeah absolutely. Brilliant. Okay. Hi yeah. Um, I just want to say to start off with that the actually I have to take these headphones off. <laughs> yeah sorry. So I, I work one-to-one -one and with groups helping people to develop their voice and learn new ways of using voice for well-being. And what I'm applying to the board for is support in offering some prog a program that I've been offering nationally with the charity Changing Minds on the Fakatau Mai program that was a well-being program that was set up through COVID. And I've been receiving a lot of really positive support from this. There's a lot of science behind the work. The, the using the tools and the exercises that I teach reduces stress, reduces anxiety, reduces blood pressure and heart rate and improves dopamine. And I want to basically share these easily accessible tools more widely with the community. And so I came up with this idea for a, a, a series of um, weekly sessions, but I <clears throat> could also, <clears throat> excuse me, offer a smaller program with free or subsidized places um, for a group. And the work that I did, I, I've, I've worked with Rimataka Prison, um, working and offering these exercises to groups of people with, suffering from trauma and the work has really had a positive impact. The, the, I've talked about the science. So um, the thing I'm passionate about with this work, I've been working in, with The Voice for Wellbeing for 25 years, and I've seen a lot of really positive transformation for people. And like a, it's really empowering to realize that you have this this tool that you can use to make yourself feel significantly better and it's helped with stress depression anxiety in clinical studies and i'm, I'm just keen to offer it more widely in the otaki community when i was doing the Fakatau mai program um, i had people joining locally because this was free to users 
it was funded by the Department of Health and by um, different health boards for the Changing Minds charity. And it was free to end users. And it was just really fantastic to be able to share that work. And that's what's inspired me to put forward this idea it's time. to offer it. Yeah, in the community this way. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration. Okay. Thank you, Byron. Byron, just a question from me. Um, do you actually have any of these workshops up and running at the moment? Do you actually have any people that you're going through this with in Old Tacky? Yeah, well, I, I've been I've been I've been in the area for four years now, and I've I have been offering one-off workshops in in throughout that time, and I've had local people coming, and I've also had some local people coming who haven't been able to join for different reasons, some of which have been financial. So I want to be able to offer some free or subsidized, you know, places that, because um, I this is what I do for my work and I have been offering it in, locally in the area, yeah. And receiving some really positive um, testimonials. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm not sure who was first, Cam or Marilyn. Okay. Cam, your account. Carol Briney, um, just a quick question. In your when you're describing your project and the um, application that we got, um, you said you want to offer a series of 12 workshops, um, four for children at, at the school and playgroup, and course of eight to ten for the general public. Um, just wondering which school. It's not particularly well, clear. No. Yeah, well, this is a very early stages application, but I do have connections with uh, the Montessori playgroup. And um, I, in the online sessions that I've done, these were the, what I'm envisaging is in-person sessions, but I have worked specifically with children. The Montessori invited me to, um, to, to do this in in the in their setting so I, I don't have a specific detail set up in that way but I have looked at and I'm starting to look at um, the idea of of holding the adult groups in the uh, women's hospital possibly or also I've been working with Kim Tasker who's also in this meeting um, 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 we've been we've been exploring doing a doing workshops at her wellness center, and um, so that yeah I'm sorry I haven't got a specific answer to that question but I the the idea for for offering to children as well as adults is when I was doing the national program which went on for a year we we had the experience of of working both with group with children and with adults and and it's, it, it was really powerful work for the children to realize that um, they can use their voice in lots of ways they might not automatically think of that will make them feel better if they do it in a mindful way. Okay. Thank, okay. You, Thank you. Thank Mar you. Marilyn. Yeah, thanks, Bryony. Um, I can see you're very passionate about what you do, and it sounds really amazing. I'm just wondering, the money that you're applying for, where is that actually going to be spent? So yeah. is it going to be your wages? Is it going to be for haul hire? What what do you where's the money going to go? Well, I should say two things first of all. One is that the amount I actually put in, I did break it down slightly in the application. Um, so some of it would cover my time and my wages, some of it and would enable me to offer it free to end users. And um, it would go to, you know, to venue hire, publicity. Um, I've put in an amount for subsidence, which would be to offer um, you know, refreshments as part of the event. I mean, what I'm envisaging with the, the budget that I put forward is for a regular two to three hour session. And the reason why I think it's advantageous to do it as a series like this, because 
what I have been doing often in my in-person sessions is one-off sessions, which work very effectively too. But when I did the online session with Fakatel Mai, um, the people fed back that, you know, practicing these tools regularly over a regular period of time um, was really advantageous for them and gave them a much greater experience of confidence. Thank you. Thank you, Barney. Um, any other questions? Uh, can, can, can I just make, make clear that um, if the budget that I've applied for is not achievable within this fund, a smaller amount would have still enable me to offer some free or subsidized places within a, you know, a series that I might be offering anyway. So okay. I, I'm just keen to offer it more widely because I've seen such brilliant results for people. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you all for your consideration. Thank you. Right, the next person on the list is Paul Gruby from Pedder Tennis, New Zealand. Right, where is he? Welcome. Hi. Wherever you are. You're not on my screen at the moment, but welcome. Let's see, how do I do that? Can you hear me okay? Oh, no, no, they just jumped around, so you can only have nine people, so yeah. Okay, so you, you can right? you... I can see you now. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Hi. Um, my name is Paul Gruby. Um, I'm a new resident in Ōtaki and um, I am the CEO of an incorporated society and not-for-profit organisation called Pata Tennis Aotearoa New Zealand and we've seen over 10,000 um, kids in the Hutt and Porirua schools um, funded programs to go into schools um, to teach kids the basics of tennis. Um, Pata Tennis is an iconic New Zealand school playground game um, that never really got developed. And after 25 years of coaching tennis around the world, upon my return, I, I wanted to do something different and, and get more kids playing tennis. So um, yeah, we just established the Incorporated Society in 2019. Um, yeah, since then we've seen um, you know over 10,000 kids. We're, we're scheduled to see 5,000 more this, this summer. And um, I lived in the States for a while and, and down in Venice Beach, they have 11 padded tennis courts next to the beach. And when I saw the, um, you know, the, the quarter court, the basketball court um, at the beach, um, the old skating rink, um, I looked at that as a, as a real opportunity to see if we can create, you know, a home for padded tennis in New Zealand um, at Otaki Beach. And with my event management experience and my tennis coaching qualifications and sport management experience, I'd, I'd like the opportunity to kind of press forward and get the, the kids and the adults of the community to come down and, and learn the basics of tennis through padded tennis. Um, I, would, I would really appreciate your consideration on, on providing some funding for the summer ahead. Um, we have um, 10 weekend um, dates um, to be confirmed and then um, coordinating with the kite festival perhaps we can kind of do something not at the same time because I know that that space is pretty jam-packed but um, a, a week or two afterwards perhaps we can run a tournament. I'm very well connected in New Zealand um, in the tennis industry and um, you know I would, I would um, invite all of my colleagues and their friends to come to Ōtaki um, to play in what we might call the Pata Tennis Festival or the, the Pata Tennis New Zealand National Champs or something like that. But our main focus is to get the, the, the young kids in the community to, to play Pata Tennis. Now, I've been in touch with various teachers in the Kapiti Coast. Um, we, we're pretty jam-packed in Term 4 and Term 1 next year but we, we want to start a rollout um, in term two next year. So um, I don't know if, if anyone has any questions for me, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to answer those questions. Uh, yeah, well, thanks, um, Paul. I remember playing Panda Tennis at, at primary school eons ago, and it was always great fun. And always a lot of squabbling over who was going to get the bats first. Um, this, it's the same situation as as with the 
the other one with the, the court and everything down there, the fact that a, it's that the land is sort of not, it's, it's under, you know, with the council and everything. It's also a, a parks and recs thing. But have you actually thought, of, is it possible to perhaps set it up and have it at either the, the tennis club down at Hirotai Park, there's courts down domain. I know the college has got all weather courts as well. Um, right. We do have quite a lot of, of court facilities in Old Taki. I'd hate to see it not happen for, for want of, of somewhere to go. Would it be possible to set it up in any one of these places? Yeah, um, yeah good question. I, I met Trevor, the new operations manager at KCDC um, for the Parks and Rec Department, and we met down there on site. And um, after a few emails, um, he has approved um, for us to go ahead and paint the courts. Um, next to the quarter court. So we, we, we've received approval um, and now it's just a, a matter of, you know, funding it. Um, I am prepared to do it off, um, you know, um, on, on my own and with my assistant, um, who's been a Nautica re resident now for 14 years. He's my assistant coach in the schools. Um, yeah, if we didn't get the funding, we would go ahead and do that because we, we have received the approval from the council. Okay. Um, and we to go to Otaki Domain to, to do six courts yeah. there, but they said, look, try something at, you know, the old skating rink first, and then we'll see what kind of numbers you can kind of get from there. So, yeah, the, my, my main sort of concern with down the beach is, I mean, it's a lovely spot. It's great in the summer on a nice still day, but when the weather's a bit iffy and it's a bit windy, it's, it's pretty windblown and pretty exposed there. I, I just would have thought that somewhere more internal like that's a bit more sheltered would actually be a, a better spot somehow and uh, and, is the, and is the surface of the courts okay because the the, the, um, the previous person said it was pretty rough and oh i've been spending a lot of time there and it's perfect it's flat um yeah it, it's it's really perfect you know pattern tennis is one of those things where it's you played in the school playground and not all <laughs> school playgrounds are perfect um so yeah, it's 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 not a big hindrance, you know, the surface down okay. there. Not, no big potholes. It's pretty good. We're we're prepared to kind of you know maintain the facility down there. I've got a water blaster ready to go, um, you know, in the in the paint and you know, um, Glenn Jacobson at the Poro City Council. He's going to help. Um, we we want to buy a uh, line marking machine. He said, look, try my line marking machine first. So I think he's going to um, not, not charge us for the paint job. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just at, at the community service after that. You know, I just want to run, um, you know, programs. Um, you know. Okay. Well, I see Cam and Shelley have both got their hands up. I don't know who was first. So, Cam? i go for um, it. Kia ora, Paul. Um, thank you for your um, words there. So a couple of questions coming out of that. So you know, your point number three about the kite festival side of things, um, certainly you, that is all completely and utterly taken by parking, so it would not be available at that time, but you've indicated that you wouldn't be holding out at the time. Um, it's not necessarily a time with the kite festival, with my, with my kite festival hat on, um, and would probably... OPG would want to know what anyone was handing out in, um, during the kite festival itself. Um, so I had two main questions. Um, how are you integrating with the local tennis club? Because this would seem to me to be a, a feeder to the Good. tennis club. Um, yeah, it is. It's a feeder sport. Um, yeah, you know, I come from the tennis fraternity. I'm a qualified coach and coached around the world for 30 years, recently returned to New Zealand and just seeing the state of New Zealand tennis, we're not producing any, ten any tennis players. Um, we just have a club structure in this country. Um, so after the weekend um, just gone, um, we had a national tennis program called Love Tennis. And I attended that and I met a few of the folks down there and I, I pulled out the pad tennis bats and, the, and just helped out the kids playing pad tennis. And it's, it was really easy for the kids to play Padded tennis at the club as a feeder sport for tennis. So I see a, an alignment with tennis. 
Um, so our, our, our chairman of the board, David Patterson, he used to chair Tennis New Zealand and he's fully supportive of, of what we're trying to achieve. And so we, we see clear alignment with, with the tennis club structure. Excellent, thank you for that. Um, and also just under the cost, for the 10 weekend day sessions, you've got um, equipment hire at $200 per day. Um, what exactly are you hiring? Okay, so um, for the two courts that we're proposing down at the beach, um, we have fold out nets and the sandbags that hold the nets down. Um, uh, the balls, um, they go missing a lot. Um, they're quite costly. They're the low compression balls. And then the bats, they're a special bat. So you might see the, uh, the picture on my, the front of my sweatshirt here. That's a 34 mil thick fiberglass bat. They last forever, like a tennis racket. It's made of carbon fiber. These are made of carbon fiber too. They're not just the plastic bats. So they, they're costly. Um, they also go walk about, so I have to keep my eyes peeled out for those. So, yeah. Um, so, those... I'm sorry, you, you put it down as higher. So, are we paying to hire it off your association or are you uh, hiring yes. it off a separate body? No, no, we are the national body of Pata Tennis in this country. And okay. um, so, those uh, assets already exist and they don't need to be hired. Is that... they, they don't need to be hired. Okay. So, I just point that out that that's probably not quite maybe stretching things a bit for us to pay to hire stuff off you for this yeah yeah our, our time would, would would be still on that yeah yep. yeah well the, the, there's the staff cost there as well yes so, okay cool thank you Paul. you're welcome shelly uh, am i on yep yep um, hi, Paul. Um, well, welcome to Otaki, and it's good to have some professional coaching in the community. I've coached many um, kids' teams and very unprofessionally, but it was always fun. My um, questions are that if the KCDC has approved the marking of the court, why can they not do it for you? Because they would have the um, line marking machine and stuff. I haven't um, gone down that road. Um, um, someone said you should apply for the local, you know, you know, for the community board um, fund. And when I saw the initiative fund, I thought, oh, this is right up our alley. You know, it's a new initiative. Um, um, yeah, that was the first first action I, I took. Really, was to um, go through the through this initiative. That's quite a bit of money, and if the council's already got the equipment and the paint, which they would have because they paint other courts around our community, um, it might be a cost you don't need to put in. The other thing is that you're gonna, you're, it's it's great to bring anything to Otaki because we're pretty cool here, but you've got four courts. How are you gonna? How many people would come to a national tournament, and would that be enough? Uh, we're just, I'm just proposing two courts be painted down there because there's the quarter basketball court. Um, we'd, we'd certainly like to collaborate with Laura, um, creating a multi-event basketball and pattern tennis. We notice when we go to the schools, basketball is the biggest thing in, in the school playgrounds. So to do to do basketball and pattern tennis together would be fantastic. Um, so so how, would, how would you hold a national event with two courts? Or yeah. would you then use other courts around the town? Well, it, right now I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say we're running a national we would run a national tournament, but it could become one day a national event. Um, you know, um, with the Parks and Rec Department at KCDC, they said, look, see what you can do down there with two courts, and then I've proposed six courts at Ortaki Domain, um, and um, yeah, they, they've just given me this kind of timeline. Um, to, to grow small down at the beach, and then if you get the numbers down there, then you can move to Otaki Domain. Um, so you would take over the normal tennis courts for pattern tennis, or can they coexist? They can coexist, yeah. Oh, a okay. multi court, like typically you'll see a tennis court and a netball court in, in one space. That's that, um, yeah, the netball and the tennis. So we're proposing um, six courts at the domain. 
Um, but as I said, you know, they just want me to start small and I, I see an opportunity down at the beach and um, yeah, and here we are. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Paul. Who did you talk to at Council and Parks and Rec? Uh, his name is Trevor. He's the new operations manager down there. Maybe have been has been there for two months, I would think. And um, Hawani was his colleague that attended the site visit down at the beach. Okay. And they're happy for you to. You said they were happy for you to, to paint them. They they weren't proposing that they put in the, the paint in the time because I know that is actually um, an expense for the council. With the you know Shelley said that the, they've already got it and they've got the staff. It still is an expense whether they've got it or not because it's still staff time and and paint whereas you're saying that you can supply the paint and the the labor the labor costs for it yeah yeah jeff and so, i have five five pad of tennis courts and and three hut schools already um yeah. so we've got the um yeah we know what we're doing um yeah. mm. but but part part of your application is for paint and painting yeah, that would be yeah out at the labour costs, but that could be transferred over to the council if I was to approach the council again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just clear that up. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Oh, hold oh. on, Janice. Janice has got something to. Um, kia ora. Hi, everybody. I'm Janice McDougall, um, Group Manager, People and Partnerships at the Kapi Coast District Council, and I support the board. I'm um, just. I'm saying that because I see lots of faces that I don't recognise here and you might wonder who I am. Um, I just wanted to confirm that I had a chat with uh, Gareth, who is the manager of our parks team, and they had indeed indicated that um, probably the costs of the marking of the courts could be absorbed within the council budgets, um, which, which is a good thing because I think the criteria for this fund um, would make it difficult for the board to approve funding for something that contributes to a council asset. I think that's outside the criteria of this fund. Cool. Thank you very much, Janice, for clarifying that point. Are there any more questions of Paul? All right, thanks, Paul. And if it goes ahead, I would like to come down and have a go because I haven't played pad tennis since I was about 12. Oh, you get a free <laughs> from me. <laughs> you still love it. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. All right, next person on the list is Barb Nixon Mackay from Energize Autopic. Right, Barb, where are you? Kia ora you? Um, I'm Barb Nixon Mackay um, from Energize Autopic. Um, I'm the coordinator there. Um, our initiative is to be running a community um, repair day for our that sounds yeah for our bike space for our bikes. Um, I don't know if everyone knows that. I think everyone sort of knows about our bike space project, but we bring in bikes, refurbish them, and give them out to um, community members. What this what's behind this is. Um, uh, collaborating with a couple of groups um, in Wellington that uh, you know have repair people and so would run a repair day so people can learn how to do the basic repairs on their bike have to say I'll be taking mine along to make sure that when I get that flat tire I know how to do it properly um, yeah so that that's actually about our initiative um, I think it's probably important that I give you just the time to ask questions and if you'd like to. Yeah, hi Barb, it's Chris here. Uh, no, you, you guys do a great job and, and I know that, that there's been a lot of kiddies and, and that and, and old tacky who've received bikes and how and helmets from Energize Old Tacky. And it's and it's been absolutely fantastic. It's a great initiative. And I might actually bring my bike along and to learn how to change a tyre because once that shared pathway is open, I'm off, I hope. So mm -hmm. does anybody have any questions? Cam, are you the only one? So far. Okay, Cam. Um, kia ora, Bob. Thanks for coming along. Um, quick question. The project cost, the paid hours, is that um, paid professionals or is that more of um, a cohort towards the people that come along and help? 
Um, some of that is koha, some of that is um, so volunteer support, we call it, um, and some of it is for the person organising and getting this all together because there is a, quite a lot of organising with it, um, getting getting the people in the right place and um, facilities, etc. Thank you. Right, thank you. Any other questions? I've lost Shelley again. No, no. She's so, there. Is she, she, has yeah. she got a question? I can't see. No. She hasn't. Okay, well, thank, thank you very, very much, Barb. That's, that's absolutely great. And so you guys do a great job in the community. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, is there anything else I should be saying? <laughs> Um, no, I think it's all covered. We're sort of fine. It's a good thing if there's not too many questions. Yeah, then I'll see you with your bike. <laughs> That'll yeah. be good. I'm definitely oh, taking wobble, mine. Wobble, wobble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. So when we're getting there, we've got 10 people to go, and thank you all for your patience. The next person on the list is Stuart Miller, Kids Needs Dance. Oh, my turn. Okay. Good on My name is Stuart Miller. I represent Kids Needs Dads, and we're about strengthening father child relationships through support, education, and fun. And that's the proposal we put forward before the board tonight is a number of initiatives that we're trying to try and build on that. There's the Co Fi Fi workshops, uh, the mural project, and then helping some people with supervised contact. And I'll leave it at that. I'll make sure mine's brief. <clears throat> move on to the questions thank you um have you actually applied to the para para umu initiative funding yeah we put one in there a couple of weeks ago okay have you heard back from them no i, I think it's due to come back in the next i haven't heard anything just yet oh okay but it's at the next meeting i think in the next couple of weeks oh okay um so have you put in an identical application to para para umu as you have with us yes but we, we've 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 done this. We we do this thing over the regions. We do that with yeah. fathers. That fathers Day can really happen this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, I know. We've 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 done funding for, for grants for Father's Day before through the board. Yeah, no, it was just it was just I just wanted to know that. That's all. So, uh, Cam. Um, got a Stuart. Uh, quick question there. So, project A, B, and C. Do all any of these take place in Otaki itself? Are they all based in Paraparo? Uh, they will, A and C will be based largely in Paraparo, uh, uh, Cap, uh, the, um, the, the hub in the old school. I just figured its name off the uh, impact hub. Um, project, uh, project B will be the one that occurs mostly in Otaki. That's the one with the local schools. Because we're trying to link up with Chihoro School. All the other ones. Um, Waitohi School and Otaki School. Waitohi, yeah. Yeah, Waitohi School, yeah. Okay, so the actual mural itself will be done at one of the schools? Yeah, the idea is there, and then we'll, well, that, that's, it's, yeah, the idea is there that it'll be done and then transported to the Captain and Back Tub and put up. Yeah, okay. Um, with A and C, is there any guarantee that there'll be Otaki pe um, people on those? Yeah, A, we're gonna. There's a few, a few of our clients from up there that we're gonna take there, but C, I'm that's I'm not too sure about. But I would see most of the funding going over A and B anyway. Gotcha. Okay, because we support us. We wouldn't really be wanting to do funding for, you know, kids outside of Otaki. Um, okay. So that would be the the thing there. And also, Project A, B, and C. There, you've put the the costs in there. Thank you for that. Um, but on the on the second page that I see, it says you're applying for fifteen hundred. So, so you're applying for fifteen hundred to go towards those three yeah, projects. Yeah. Well, probably probably more be over A and B. You get it now. But yeah, yeah. So okay. we're we're looking for a number of funding avenues to try and cover the entire budget of seven six five four. Okay. So yeah. I think we've got six one five four to find. Okay, thank you. I just want to clarify how much you're asking from this initiative. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Shelley. Um, 
So I rang the principal of Waitohu School, Waitohu School and they hadn't had any contact with, or you hadn't had any contact with them about the mural. And just being quite mindful, having had a lot to do with the school, that actually if you're going to organise stuff in the fourth term, it's pretty um, time constrained. So right. just wondering if you've got a project that you've outlined, but you haven't made, have you made contact with any of the other schools? No, that was the, <coughs> we we're running a bit behind on some of these projects because of various issues. But that's one of our things that we've got to get underway over the next week. Well, having been quite involved in the schools, it's pretty hard to fit anything in in that fourth term. Right. Is there, is there any scope to move that out? Because I don't think you'll get it in with any of the schools, to be completely honest. Well, we just that, that's part of the, the planning we've got to do after this. I mean, we'll be looking at those time frames and things like that, because as you, as you point out, yeah, I, I'm just looking at some of them now. I'm thinking about some of the workshops might have to be pushed back to till, till the first term next year as well. Mm. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Shelley. And are there any more questions? Marilyn, I can't see if you were, no, you haven't. Okay, well, thank you very much, Stuart. We will consider your application and get back to you. Okay, right. Thank you. right, next person on the list is Tiffany Manihita Richards. Tina Koto, he uritine no. Nga hau e whā, mai te wau paunamu, tatū ana ki ngā tika hunganu ki waira rapa, tau ana ki ngā te tua rangatira, ka huri o ku whakaaro ki ngā te rauka o te uki te tonga, nō te ati awa a ki whakarungo tai hoki, tau ana anō ki ngā te mani a puto, he uri tēnei anō, nō ngā pau o ōtaki, kia ora, my name is Tiffany, Manihira Richards, <clears throat> and um, I hail from many iwi around Aotearoa. I was born and raised in Ōtaki, um, and at the moment I have been working on a collaboration with Hui Rangatahi. Um, <clears throat> the biggest one is, is working with Rangatahi that aren't actually in school, so um, I've work, been working in... <clears throat> with um, Ngā Hapu o Ōtaki, Te Atiawa Ki Whakurungu Tai, uh, Te Whānau Barra over on Kapiti Island. Um, I've done some tunu at Mai Marae Hui as well <clears throat> for, for tautoko um, of this kaupapa. So the name of it is Te Kotahi Taga o Ngā Rangatahi Maia, which is um, unity and determination within our youth. Uh, my my Fakaro and program that we are trying to work in collaboration with is um, running Hui Rangatahi based within Wotaki, Parapurumu, in between both those areas. Um, <clears throat> we have a, our first one. Our first one is already going ahead, which is over on Kapiti Island on the 30th of September. Our aim is to get six, is over the whole year, is only going to be 18 rangatahi. A majority of these rangatahi are coming from really hard backgrounds. Majority of them don't go to school. They range between 13 to 18. Um, <clears throat> Majority of them are living here in Ōtaki. Two of them aren't actually from here, but they've just been brought up here. So I'm working in with a lot of Māori children. So they're coming from really dysfunctional homes. Um, <clears throat> my idea is to work in with around the taiao. So it, it is our whenua, getting them engaged with the whenua. It's a way of teaching them how how to look after the to how to look after the whenua as a way that we can look after ourselves. Um, I work in conservation. <clears throat> I have five children of my own. Um, I spend the majority of my time out hunting or working with the environment. 
I've got Papataya on board with me to help give some of these children credits through um, fencing. So we can do some fencing with them. Um, I do some training within predator control so we can Hi. get some credit through them as well with um, Papataya. Um, I have got the go ahead with some of the recreational uses of the counts from the council, which was just swimming, um, hireage of pools, um, and kaibosh. I'd done a tunnel to kaibosh, so they were on board to help with any kai that they can. It's not like saying they can cater to us, but they can give what they can. Um, yeah, did you just say time? Kia ora. Right. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Uh, I see Marilyn, you've got your hand up. Kia ora, Tiffany. Um, you're doing a good job with all these rangatahi. Thank you. I'm just looking at why you need this funding. And I see things such as fishing rods and equipment and T-shirts and um, camping equipment and um, oh, yeah, a whole lot of stuff here. I'm just wondering what happens to that after you've finished with these kids? What happens to all of that equipment? Uh, yeah, so that equipment, <clears throat> that equipment is going to eventually roll through. So we, it's just going to be forever being used with each wānanga. So this isn't just a, this isn't just a, a wānanga and we forget about these children and we forget about this equipment and we just, you know, thinking that we're going to keep the equipment for ourselves. No, that is not the issue. The issue was trying to create a legacy that is going to continue to run through these children. There are rangatahi programs out there but once the children finish that that program, no one even stays in contact with them. They don't they don't carry on that relationship with them. I'm still wanting to carry this on, so it's an ongoing thing. It's not just a a monthly wānanga and and it's over and the equipment's forgotten about. It's eventually, hopefully, this can carry on for many years after the beginning of this. So. <clears throat> Some of the stuff on that list I've already acquired myself. Like I've brought the chest freezer. I've been I've been stocking up on um, some equipment. Like I have my own family fishing rods and stuff. But <clears throat> it's about getting them to getting them to get in touch with nature. Like we can provide for ourselves. We don't need people to provide for us if we know how to gather our kai. If we know how if we have those skills, these skills aren't taught in school. Some children really want to engage with the environment. They really want to learn how to fish. My, children, my son is 10 years old. He already knows how to dive. My, I've been teaching my children since they were two years old. They can dive. They can, they can um, fish. And it's a thing that a lot of children aren't exposed, exposed to that stuff. Thank you. Cam. Um, kia ora, Tiffany. Thank you very much for that. Um, just a question. Has this been run under a group or an organisation or is that something that you're um, doing with your fantastic work personal? No organisation. I just had the backing from um, my iwi, uh, my komatua. Um, yeah, no organisation. I think I just have a passion for it because I've been seeing so many, <clears throat> I've seen so many people falling through the gaps and as an ongoing issue, like there are other rangatahi programs out there. Um, this is no competition, the more the merrier because that means that less children are getting in trouble, or getting into crime. And I just see a lot of, yeah, dysfunctions. Majority is dysfunctions. Got it. Um, also, if the if the full amount wasn't funded, will it still go ahead? And like, will it actually be like a, a smaller program, or just less people, or are you um, really yes, keen on getting as many amount, as possible? Yeah, you know, because obviously I got advice, and they said don't, you know, don't write that amount. I said, you know what, <laughs> I'm not expecting that whole amount, but if 
everything I can acquire um, it will help but no so my first one's already going ahead which is the 30th of um, 30th of September so I've already fundraised $750 which that's taking 16 people over to Kapiti Island so six of those are rangatahi we actually haven't one extra child on there uh, a, a family friend had reached out for a child um, that had been brought down from Auckland so they're now living in Waikawa so now that's an extra child added to the list. So that's seven. There's nine more seats. So that is adults. We've got adults. I've got two people from Papa Tile coming. So I have a photographer coming and I have another um, one of my colleagues that is coming. And the rest is made up out of some more adults coming to help. <clears throat> uh, so I had to raise $750. And that was covering us for the Friday night. And we come home on the Saturday, very in the afternoon. Um, and I just fundraised that from Lotto Drops. I just done two Lotto Drops, fundraised that. Um, I brought a chest freezer and I've been stocking up food in there myself. Um, I've reached out to family friends that have farms and have been donated like meat and stuff towards the co Um, yeah. Good. Yeah, thank you. Kia ora. Oh, kia ora. Um, sounds like a great initiative. Just wondering, I must have missed it. Who, who gives you the referrals? How do you get the referrals for the children that come to you? Um, so how I got the refer referrals was just from word of mouth at this stage. I have got some contacts at um, Te Puna Oranga, which one of my friends is a social worker there. So she had reached out to me as well. So have you been involved at all in the Dangatahi program that's running? That's part of, that's part of a Te Puna Oranga initiative yeah 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 I have I have I've had kōrero and stuff with them but um see prior to me even getting my first children a lot of these children that I'm that are coming they're it's really a touchy subject but they're like self-harmers so it's um you know I think it's a bit more than just rangata here a lot of them are I like self-harming children. So a lot of it is just because people, you know, I work in, I network with people. So because of what I'm trying to establish and it's just from working within Iwi that I've found these connections with these children. And that's the thing, there's not enough of me and people to hold a bigger capacity of children like if I if I could I would take on so many but then that's unfair because then they're not even getting the quality time or that attention that they actually need so have you been in touch with anyone from Ministry of Social Development or anyone like that that can help out or no no why <laughs> Well, well I'm just again. wondering, that's the kind of people that would be interested, I suppose, in helping with initiatives for Rangatahi. Getting ongoing funding, it's about getting it ongoing, isn't it? And having a program up and running that you can sustain into the future. Yeah, well, I had done, um, I had done, like, I had got some, um, like, first aid kits and stuff donated from Manaki Kapiti. Um, I had done a tunnel to... Uh, why can I charitable trust and that was just through one of my marae um, so they're having their hui tonight as well um, I just I told them I couldn't make that one so they already knew what I was talking about because I had to jump on this one um, but we were trying to work with them for them to, to try give some ongoing funding so with my marae 
because these children are coming from all Taki, so they all fuck, majority of them, they all fuck a papa into the Art Confederation, which is Aotearoa Um And the main hub, well, the backing of it was obviously at Whakarungotai, but the children are coming from all Taki if that, if that's an issue or a problem. No, no, no. Thank you. Hello. Right. Thank, thank you, Tiffany. Um, do you just just a quick question? Are you just working out of your your own personal residence, or you you actually got an office or a setup somewhere where you're actually working from? Um, no, I just work out of my own house, and when I go into my own work is when I. Um, collaborate with others other other than that when I it's like the afternoon night time is when I spend my time on um on this co so I've it's not like it just came out of my head it's something I've been trying to work on for a while um it's just being able to put it out there and actually get the support I was actually if I didn't get the support from my iwi and my people, it wouldn't have been, you know, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have even been an option for me to do it on my own without um, having that support. Oh, that's, that, that's But that's really... the thing, like, whether it goes, like, if I don't get funding, um, I will just continue to do this however I can. Okay. Well, if, if, you, if, you, don't, if you don't get this funding, please... Keep it up, and um, and as I say, you can always try for community board grants as well through the, the next triennium. So, but thank you, you're doing a splendid job. I know there's a lot of kids out there that really need this sort of help. So, well done. Hmm. Right, who's um, next? Next person on the list is Cam Ronald from the Otakian District Memorial RSA. Right, welcome, welcome, Cam. I will have to step back from the table on this one, being an RSA person. So I, all I can do is welcome you and say hello. <laughs> thank you, Chris, and uh, thanks to the community board. This is a bit of a different application when we look at the other ones we've heard tonight. This is looking to renovate the well overdue um, and quite ancient toilets for the men and women at the Otaki RSA. The um, Facilities are old, they're hard to keep clean, and at times they're probably not as sanitary as we'd love to have them. Uh, we want to raise them up to the same standard as the rest of the club rooms that's been done by voluntary, voluntary labour and a lot of donations from the community. And perhaps to answer one of the questions that may come is, while this is a quite a sizable request, uh, we would be uh, more than grateful to receive any amount that the board could offer, because we do have funds, as I've listed, of about four and a half thousand as a contingency. Um, but we could mix and match to make that work. The RSA is a non-profit organisation, an incorporated society. It's evolved over the years into much more of a community club uh, with pool, billiard starts, dance lessons, meetings. 85% um, of our 700 members have no link to the return services or to the military or our veterans. Uh, the benefits that we see in it is that it would improve the, the whole facility, to bring it up to a standard, um, because at the moment we're slightly embarrassed by it. Um, it will be open uh, to all of our 700 plus members, uh, their families, the guests that come into the restaurant and also attendees at events. And our facility is open seven days a week uh, during the day and open to the public. So the toilets and facilities are continually available. The RSA and the community club has really become, we think, the venue of choice uh, for community and private functions in Otaki over the last two years. Uh, weddings, birthdays, funerals, memorials, family celebrations, uh, you name it, we sort of have it, snooker, darts, cowsy. Uh, we had a wonderful event two weeks ago, raising money with a quiz night for the Health Camp Restoration Group. Uh, of course, we've got a meeting coming up for the 2022 local body elections, and we have groups like Amicus and others meet on a monthly basis. We don't charge anyone for use of our premises in any way at all. Uh, I think the, the club, the RSA, has perhaps taken up the space that may have been held by the Memorial Hall and the supper room, the senior citizens room, and the rotary rooms, because we do have renovated facilities other than the toilets, the catering bar, and the very good facilities. 
Uh, we also see ourselves as placed in the future as OTEPI expands, the OTEPI Community Club and RSA will be prepared to expand. Um, about 10% of the total population of OTEPI from the last census are members of the club um, who pay a membership and their families and guests. If you, by the time you put those numbers together, probably 20% of the OTEPI community access the premises. Uh, they, the premises provide significant events and a community facility, and we seek the support of the board uh, to assist us with a grant if this is possible. Thank you. Welcome. Any questions? Right. Does anybody have any questions of Cam? No. No. Me. I've lost Shelley again. <laughs> she keeps disappearing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Cam. There doesn't appear to be any questions. Your application must have been very clear and concise, and your presentation the same. Thank you. So, we, we did recognise the uh, piece in red on the application form that says that the board is able to consider any application at its, as it, at its discretion. Perhaps yeah. we are that discretion. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, Christine. I, I, do, I, I do have a quick question. I'd just note that um, Cam has a question. Yeah. Go for it, Cam. Yeah, oh, Kira, Cam here. Don't. Hello, Cam. I'm well. Um, quick question. So you've got 4,600 sitting in the uh, renovation account. Um, so does that mean you roughly need sort of 7,400 for the renovations to go ahead? We're conscious of the fact that anyone who's uh, renovated a bathroom or a kitchen <laughs> knows that, well, you might have a budget of 12,000, you're probably going to end up spending another 50%. Um, so we've, we've based it on that. The, est the best estimate, the trade estimate is 12,000. Um, but we, we really do expect that if we do that full job, that it will need extra funds. So those funds were community funds that were donated for our inside renovation, and we would apply those. Thank you, Cam. Right. Thank you, Cam. Thank you, Cam, and thank you, Cam. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> so, thank so, you. Chris, before um, we go on to the next speaker, because um, we've been going now for three, nearly three hours, we just <clears throat> have to make a resolution that the will community board notes that the meeting will go beyond two hours without taking a break and we resolve to continue the meeting without taking a break in order to complete pub public speaking time yeah are you happy with that you'll just need to get someone to move okay it. well i'll move it if someone can second it cam seconded it he stuck his thumb up Thank so you. there we go Thank, thanks a lot samara do you need to them to vote on it they've all uh well marilyn's waving a hand oh, around okay. so, cool. and I can't, awesome and i've lost, and I've lost Shelley again. Okay. No, she's all good. Okay, next person on the list is Kim from Harpai Wellness. Tēnā uh, koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, my name is Kim Tasker. I'm married to Zach Highland. He is Queenie Ricky Hana Highland's son. We've just returned to Ōtaki uh, three years ago from living in Central America where we ran um, a health and wellness resort for celebrities from California, mainly actors and professional athletes. I was the health and wellness facilitator there hosting yoga and wellness um, alongside other programs for um, AA addictions, mainly for these professional celebrities from Hollywood. Um, we've returned to Ōtaki and I've started a business um, next door to Māori land in Merle Mitakingi's um, beautiful colonial building called Harpai Wellness. I did prepare a slideshow, but um, just my first time on the Ōtaki board, I sort of put my slideshow to the side. Mainly most of my slideshow was coming from my education background since I've returned to New Zealand. I've, I've taken up tertiary teaching. I teach um, a UCOL health and wellness program, support worker for elderly care and disabled care, um, as well as being a yoga teacher and a mindfulness teacher and a physical therapist coming from a background in health science. Um, I'm about to also do a degree in social well-being and specialising in mental, mental wellness and addictions. Um, so basically from that sort of background, I've been teaching yoga and mindfulness and running health and wellness retreats over at Kapiti Island in Rotorua 
in Taupo um, as part of my business and teaching yoga around the community, Māori Land Rotary Hall that you talked about earlier. I think I've been everywhere in Ōtaki, Nā Puta Puta, um, until I found my own place. Um, my proposal is to put forth a couple um, workshops for um, rangata, uh, rangatahi and children. Um, my pitch, my first pitch, this is a pilot pitch, is for running mindfulness, pu'au mindfulness classes at Otaki Kura. You see on my application form, I have a contact there, Ashley Parkinson. So Ashley is the edu uh, physical education and health and wellbeing um, representative for Otaki Kura. Um, I have taught mindfulness and yoga for the Whitby Collegiate at uh, Te Raukaua Marae through uh, Whakatipuranga. Um, plus, so that's given me some experience in that space. And also with my education, tertiary education background, I really understand what Andy Fraser was talking about earlier, about engaging um, our learners, our students, um, and engaging them through health and well-being is my focus. That's my passion. So holistic health and well-being. We talk about financial literacy before with Cameron. I did see Cameron That's at fine. the Carpeti Expo. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, the other part of my proposal is for um, the elderly. It's a komatua, uh, which is quite sensitive and close to my heart. It's a komatua mindfulness. Um, and it's to do with early onset dementia and Alzheimer's. So okay. that's what I teach elderly. Right. You've had, you've had, sorry, but you've had your three minutes, Kim, and we've, yeah. it's going to be a very long night. Yes, so. absolutely. So, um, yeah, shoot me yeah. with some questions. Yeah. Um, I, oh, Shelly's back. <laughs> you keep disappearing off my screen. So I don't know who put your hand up first, Cam or Shelly. So Cam, was it? Okay, Cam, go. Um, kia ora. Um, so in reading through there, those two workshops look look great. Um, are you able to, well, just roughly break down the costs of workshop one versus workshop two? Because your application is for the whole amount, but there's the potential for us to actually say, well, actually we'll fund workshop one or we may fund workshop two. Um, are you able to just do a little bit of mental arithmetic and give us an estimate as to which how much each workshop would cost, please? Okay, so I would say my first primary priority would be Otaki Kura. Um, I've also sought funding, I will be through Nuku Ora, which is New Zealand sport. Um, so if I don't get all my funding through this, I'll, get, I'll be seeking funding elsewhere through um, Nuku Ora Wellington sport. Um, so I pay rent at... Um, where I am, where my business is set up at Hapai. And I've already received the Māori Economic Grant through KCDC. So my funding oh, wow. has already covered rent. Um, so what I'm actually applying for here is transport to take outside of where I am in the venue space. So to be able to take them outside to the beach, outside to Hurotai Park. And also for the Komatua is to actually eventually have transport a bus to pick everyone up and to bring them to maybe Harpai or to any other location which we could run the um, Ho Order mindfulness programs. Um, it'd be covering facilitation. Um, and also I've been collaborating with Tupuna Oranga Otaki. I was the Kairahi there for the Manakiao program, and I just recently handed my notice in. Um, so that I could actually just do my holistic health and well-being, apart from the social services side through Ministry of Social Development. Um, so a lot of my sourcing is to be able to collaborate with others and really collaborating with health professionals. So collaborating with social services. So we're caregivers for Oranga Tamariki. So I'd want to be working alongside professionals who have relationships and can refer the children. So through the Otaki Kura, it might be actually having programs where we have identified individual uh, tamariki who actually have problems 
PTSD or trauma. So this would be collaborations and paying for facilitation for that and also setting up all of the resources. So the idea is to have a set of resources which would be able to be digitalized, possibly even put on an app, but all of the resources are given back to Otaki Kura. So everything's free, but they get to have that. And it's a pilot program to go into Tihoro or to go over to Otaki College. But part of the program is, is they actually now have these resources. So getting more funding for more uh, collaborations with professionals who can put into these resources will cost money for their time that they put into for, for putting that together. Uh, a lot of it as well as video production. So I've put, I've only put one quote in, but that was with um, Philadelphia, Metakingi. She works at the Wananga Orokawa because I need a film crew to film a lot of all the stuff that I would be running and filming online. So instead of just using my phone, so I've sourced some uh, quotes from her to just do a series of 10 videos. I have actually talked to a couple of people around Otaki as well to see whether we could collaborate, whether they'd be interested in filming um, the courses and the classes and also being able to, to digitalize them. Um, also, it's, I've got it down here, digital, the website, advertising, Facebook, grab, Instagram, photos, um, course creation, resources, manuals, printing, laminates, hard copies, copyright, website costs, um, utilities and props. If we're at a school, there'll be, you know, Manaki, our, our Manaki, Fadi Manaki, where they have at Otaki Primary School, we can have up to like, we'll probably have to do two sessions because the school's about 100, just over 100 students. We couldn't fit 100 in one space. So we'd need like maybe 50 mats. Okay. So 20 mats. Um, yeah, sorry, just to cut in there, Kim, that wasn't like, my question was how much can you break down each workshop oh. um, in terms of costs in case we decided that we, um, particularly wanted to fund just the kura or whether we wanted to fund just the dementia side of things. So is it what, yeah. just a, a quick rough guess oh, about okay. what each workshop would cost if they were run separately? Um, well, I had pitched for five workshops, but in my presentation now, I think eight is better. Scientifically, you'd want to be doing at least 21 days in order for the mind to make those changes, um, which is which is the outcome of these programs. So if I'm running 16 programs and say each program, I'd say half and half. I put down what I put down there in my proposal, I would say half of that would be for one program and the other half would be for the other. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank That's you. Me finish yours for okay. your show. Pam Shelley. Kia ora, Kim. Kia ora, Shelley. Um, how are you? Um, I'm a bit flustered, actually. <laughs> I just, I actually rung Waitahu School to ask about um, this. Have you Waitahu? Engaged, yeah, have you engaged with the schools? Because no, they, not Waitahu, Otaki, Otaki Kura. Okay, because um, Maine said that they were looking at a mindfulness program. I'm just wondering if it was yours that didn't, ring a bell with him across all of the schools in Ōtaki, a mindfulness yoga program. And I'm just wondering if it's going to be doubling up or if you've... If I'm not I've sure because I haven't... seen the other schools. Well, I've... Well, I have quite a few teachers come to my yoga classes. So I've been talking to Kate Lindsay from Ōtaki College. Um, but I've, I haven't talked to anyone from Waituhu School. I don't have any contacts there. My main contact is, is Ashley and Roru from Otaki Kura, and that's my main focus at this stage, which is my first pilot. Okay, because it says here, uh, stage two. So your yeah. stage one is, to, is just the one school. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So yeah. it would be interesting to know what's going on with the other schools because that's what I was told, is that they are looking at 
a mindfulness yoga type program for across the schools in Otaki under the Kahuiako program that they've got going, which is the collaborative schools program where all the schools are pooling together to, to kind of collaborate and um, deliver better education. Just so you're aware that there are other discussions going on around this. Yes, yeah, I have I have through Tupuna Oranga Otaki, because I've vocalized my um my ideas to some of you know, they kind of intermingle a lot of it, like Tupuna Oranga Otaki, the Kura, and also some of the funding streams, they kind of layer and cross over. So it has been so um I'm about to set up a with some other um, kaioko or tutors who are ex-tutors from Tirito Primary School. And I've worked alongside Waka Ho and run some um, mindfulness programs which have been funded, part of their Waka Order program. Um, and also because I facilitated for Whakatipuranga uh, as well through the school, there's been a lot of layover and a lot of weaving that's crossed over in my kaupapa. But it's not just my kaupapa. They've all sort of been on the same, same mindset of, yes, this is something that we would really love to um, bring into the schools for education. And also because I do come from an education background as well as I sort of sit in between both. There's lots of different funding. I could go down sport. I can go down education. So the conversations I've had have been about aligning myself and collaborating and getting this board of trustees set up which is a holistic board of trustees so it's holistic health um so there has been conversation around and especially at my yoga studio I get people coming in all the time and we talk about it and they're like oh my gosh wouldn't this be amazing if we had it in schools and so yes conversation is everywhere <laughs> Any other questions? Right. Thank you very much, Kim. It, it, it sounds terribly interesting and um, and it sounds like you had an enjoyable time in the States, especially where you were staying, living. <laughs> Fun place. <laughs> Thank um, you. So no other questions? Okay. Thanks, Amelia. Okay. Bye. So next person on the list is Jamie Ball from Zero Waste Wataki. Welcome, Jamie. Well, Welcome, Jamie. Where are you? I've lost okay. you. You were there a minute ago. There you are. Hi, Jamie. Well, welcome to the board again. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Hi. Yep. Um, first up, I'd just like to thank Otaki Community Board on behalf of Zero Waste for the support you have given us since our inception. Some of it was very simple. Um, personal protective equipment and so on but without which we wouldn't be able to go forward and to be, be becoming the community success that I believe we are um, in less than two years. It was only the end of January last year that we were launched. And I sometimes find that hard to believe actually. We now have about 30 to 40 volunteers, not all on site all the time. Some are just working behind the scenes and in the last 12 months, they've put in about 3,000 volunteer hours. Um, and so, uh, you know, we feel very much a community project. Um, and we've reached a point where bit by bit, we're developing the site, but we desperately need a standalone fit for purpose office. And so our application is purely for that like cam we've we've we took that line in red <laughs> but it will be amazing for the well-being improve the well-being of our volunteers and our connection with the rangatahi whose current intake is 17 and their first visit on site is tomorrow and the last lot during the winter you know we'd have wet days and there's no there's nowhere where we can put a group um, we're standing around in the rain or under our cover. Um, so we've we've applied for a significant 
amount. Uh, and that is what would absolutely enable it to happen now. If we're unsuccessful in getting all of that, we would still be welcoming a contribution and then we will do, as we did with our second container, get a series of funds and support until we can, can get, purchase the building, um, which comes from Upper Hutt. Uh, it's the cheapest standalone office building that we could find that also wasn't going to cost a huge amount in um, transporting to our site and we, we have a location that we'd like it to happen at. So basically, it's a, a straightforward and simple application and I welcome any questions. Thank you, Jamie. Yes, it's hard to believe it's been you know, not that long. My gosh, you guys are doing such a wonderful job there. You, you really, really are. So does anybody have any questions? Oh, wow. See, your application was just so clear and concise. And you're present, you're, but you're used to presenting to the board. So, <laughs> Well, that was a miracle because filling in that blooming form, it went all over the place. <laughs> I do apologize for that. No. Uh, technologically challenged, I think. But uh, we appreciate uh, the relationship and the connection we have with the community board. And if it's not this time, We'll be back. Yeah, yeah, don't don't ever don't ever give up. Thank thank you very very much, Jamie. Kia ora koutou. Okay, thank you. Bye. All right, next oh, person on on the list is Yvonne Demille. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yep. Yes. Kia ora, everyone. Um, my name's Yvonne DeMille and I've lived in Otaki for about 12 years now and um, I'm, some people know me as a kite maker because that's been my main profession over the last 36 years um, but I also have worked in education, I've worked for the Open Polytechnic, uh, Fitirea Polytechnic and Capital Training working with what we call second chance learners. So this application is to uh, run some workshops at Otaki College with some of the disengaged students that are there. Uh, I've talked with Kate Lindsay and Hamish Wood, who are the teachers who work with this, that group. And also Andy is, um, knows, he's been copied into the emails, so he knows and I, uh, I'm proposing this. And um, the other teachers are, supportive of the application. So the idea is to work with um, the students, teach them how to make kites, come up with their own designs, teach them how to fly them, and ultimately teach them how to fight them, which is a Japanese kite fighting thing, um, with the idea of hoping to raise their confidence a bit and to possibly engage them in the wider community because if they were um, open to it they could actually take part in the kite festival next year um, fighting kites uh, which would be a huge for, for people like that who are some some of them suffer from anxiety or uh, neurodivergent um, and disengage, basically disengaged at school. So um, perhaps you could ask me some questions. I'm not quite sure what else to say about it. Thank you, Yvonne. I think Cam, you had your hand up. Thanks, Cam. Hello, Yvonne. Nice to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just a question with the breakdown of your costs, um, could you just explain a little bit more about what the thousand dollars of fees are so that's um tutor fees but um i also noticed that i've said that i would volunteer as well I, you know i just, i know i still need to eat but i'm quite happy to work for nothing sometime sometimes so. 
Okay, so those fees are actually uh, paid to you personally. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The rest is all materials, I think. Yep, that's my question. Thank you, Val. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, thank you very much, Yvonne. Okay, I'm going to be you. in touch. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Who's next? Um, so our next public speaker is um, Ruth McKenzie from, sorry, I've got multiple things happening at once. Um, yeah, I'll just pop it through now. Hello. <clears throat> Can everyone hear me? Yes, welcome, Ruth. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your time. I uh, know it's been a long evening for all of you. Um, so I'll be fairly brief. So the Capity Light Orchestra is basically made up of members of the Capity Con uh, Concert Orchestra, um, just a smaller orchestra that tends to do, uh, I guess, lighter programs, um, often do things in places like malls and um, old people's residences, homes. Uh, retirement villages, etc. Um, so very community community focused orchestra. Um, because Capity Concert Orchestra isn't doing a concert in Otaki this year, uh, where they, uh, which they normally do, KLO's uh, decided to do uh, a smaller concert for money directed at children. So it's going to be quite an informative, fun, um, interactive concert. Uh, so the children will be invited to come and play uh, percussion instruments, for instance. Um, there'll be a, um, they're going to do uh, dancing the queen dance and dress competitions um, and some Christmas songs, um, getting uh, children to play music in Star Wars. Uh, so there'll be lots of fun and humour. So it's a good introduction. So the aim is to have a very, like a $5 entrance fee for uh, for the adults who are bringing children and uh, children um, are free for the concert. Uh, and so really we're just looking to cover any short falling costs from the from the door charge. So any questions? Thank you, Ruth. Does anybody have any questions? I know I know your your concerts and things have been very, very popular in the past and very, very successful and and everybody seems to enjoy them. So so well done. Shelley. Thank you. Sorry. Where will the kids come from? Will this just be in the uh, Memorial Hall or somewhere? Oh, we will be using the theatre for it. Oh, so, okay. yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so specific. What, what is the Mahara Band? What, sorry? What is the Mahara Band? Um, I'd actually, sorry, I don't know too much about them. Um, they're one of the one of the members of the band um, plays in the orchestra, and so they've offered to come along and play as well, and um, probably teach children some dancing uh, to the music that they play. But sorry, I, yeah, so I'm not very aware of the kind of music that they that they do. Um, they're just going to be doing. I think they've got two ten minute sessions on either side of the um, and. Okay, so you'll advertise this around the schools and stuff so that people in the yes. newsletters and everything, yeah. Okay. Yes, and local papers and, yeah, just community posters um, and shops and things like that. So it'll be very much targeted at an Otaki, Otaki audience. Mm. And where, when is it going to be? Uh, it's going to be on the 10th of um, December. Probably in there, okay. Cool. So you've definitely got the um, theatre for that? Uh, my understanding is, yes, we've right. got the theatre for that, yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much, Ruth. Anybody else got any questions of Ruth? No? Thank you, Ruth. Okay, thanks very much. Okay. We're getting the next person on the list is Tanya Hakadaya from Māori Land Charitable Trust. Kia ora koutou. Um, oh, three minutes for me. Wow, that's a big ask. Okay. <laughs> so I'm one of the founders of the Māori Land Film Festival, and I am also a trustee of the Māori Land Charitable Trust. 
Um, and I'm making an app. I've made this application on behalf of the Maori Land Kai Collective. We have many arms in Maori Land, uh, lots of different, um, yeah, just just different rooms, I suppose. But um, our Kai Collective is basically uh, we have made a commitment, which we've been working on for the last six years. It's a long-term project to uphold food security within our community. Um, by providing education, um, b- b- providing spaces for people to get together, um, which then in turn has led on to our relationship with uh, Kaibosh, the food recovery organization. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so every week, Maori Land, we, we bought ourselves a little waka, um, a little van that we've painted up called Kai Waka. Every week, we go down to Paraparumu and collect. Kai from Kaibosh and bring it back here to distribute through our community. Um, we're not a food bank. We, we, really, we really want to be enabling people to help themselves as much as they can by helping them out. So basically we put our Kai out on the main street outside our, our hub and encourage every single person who walks past to participate by taking something. It isn't needs-based. It's about getting this food through the community. Um, Take something, pass it on. We started off um, by having to stand out there for about two to three hours to give away a van load of kai. Um, Every week now we're set up by 11 o'clock today most of it was gone by 11.30. There is need in our community. Um, so that also led on to the fact that we're getting this Kai. Kai Bosch is so generous with what they give us. They give us additional. So um, over the last six months, as part of um, the uh, COVID response, we could see there was a need for meals that, that weren't provided through um, Te Puna Oranga to, pe- to people who may be ill, but hadn't registered as having had COVID. So we picked up by just doing home cooked meals with this Kai from Kaibosh. Um, That in turn led to when we saw the opportunity for a um, purpose built kitchen that was for sale on Trade Me. We, We really needed it. We don't have a kitchen here at Maori Land. Our kitchen that was going to be in existence um, when we had all our renovations done, got converted into toilets instead. So we lost that space. So anyway, long story short, there was a, a, a kitchen for sale up in Kati Kati. Um, my, okay, my husband and I decided we would buy it for Maori land to use as long as they need it. And at some stage they will pay us back. <clears throat> So the kitchen's here, it's not totally fitted out. We've got little ovens, we need a decent oven, we need a fridge underneath. Um, We also want to be funded somewhere along the line to get our money back. Um, Yeah, look, everything else is in our application. Um, We just want to engage with public. There is need and we can help with that need and we are helping with that need. Um, Yeah, fire away. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, I've, I know I've, I've walked, walked past and seen the, the good stuff you're doing, so that's really great. Uh, Cam, you've got your hand up. Sorry, sorry for the delay there, just like taking the problems. Um, kia ora, Tanya. I really enjoyed our chat that we had um, a number of weeks ago, and I was mm. watching the process of um, people. Um, grabbing food from the um, the co walker or throw the table. Um, just a quick question: Could you just elaborate a little bit for me, please, on what uh, what is run in the monthly workshops? Um, because okay, you applied um, for money for that. I just want to know what. Um, so so that was for twelve mon- monthly workshops, which also includes the running of our Kaibosh project. Um, in the past, prior to COVID hitting, we had regular workshops here. Where that are open, it's all free, open to anyone. We do things like pickle making. Um, we've just people have just been leaving here now. We've just had a, a seed swap um, kai share evening that I didn't actually get to, but it looks like it was well attended. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, no, that's fine. 
Um, in this, just this last weekend, Māori Land has run um, a gaming a gaming day for Rangatahi. Um, they had 30, 30 kids come along to that. They had to limit it at 30. So all these events that we do, we provide free kai for. Um, but basically our workshops, there is just so many opportunities out there. The next one we really want to look at running is a baby cafe where we get young mums along with their babies. Basically, we make boiled food for babies. You know, make baby food because these mums are going to the shop and buying these awful sucky things. We've got vegetables in our mara. We've got vegetables from kibosh. And quite honestly, a lot of the mamas don't even realise that you put it all in a pot, boil it up, moolie it together, and you've got really good sustainable food for your kids. So, you know, I mean, that's just one of the events. Um, really desperately, uh, Tiffany that spoke earlier, I'm going to get in touch with her because that having this kitchen gives us the ability to bring in a couple of people at a time. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a chef, I'm not a cook. I just cook at home. But, you know, we can all show young people what to do with a dozen sausages and a few potatoes, you know, that doesn't involve going down the road to the takeaway shops. So they're the sort of workshops that now that we can start moving along, you know, it's, look, any suggestions are open, but yeah, the world's our oyster as far as that's concerned. Cut off, thank I you. hope that covers it. Yep. <laughs> I think so, thank you. Uh, Shelley. Kia ora, Tania. Kia ora. You, do amazing, you do amazing work and I can attest to having talked to your husband who says that you spend probably three days a week cooking at home for these meals <laughs> of your own time. And um, I just wanted to clarify with the board, though, I talked to you the other day about the income <coughs> and expenses. Oh, that yeah. actually, Tania's put that down wrong, so they don't actually have the 10 grand towards the... The kitchen was 17,000, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, the, the kitchen was 17, eight, yeah. So the Māori land has already paid the 7, eight? Um, Māori land will pay the 7, eight. Will pay the yeah. 7, eight. They have, they have paid, they paid all our transport costs. Yeah. Incidentally, can I just say here, um, as, a, as a local in Otaki, so this, this little fuddy was up in Kati Kati. It wasn't easy to get. Um, was going to cost mega bucks to get it down here. But you know what? Clifton Motors honestly gave Jesse a ring. He had did it as a backload. You know, you can't go past locals. Yeah. <laughs> They're awesome. Yeah. No, I just wanted to clarify that that's actually the, the amount on the income side is not actually income. Your costs were... Yeah, 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 that's right. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Tania. That's um, that's really, really, really great. Um, uh, next person on the list is Hannah from Elevate Otaki. Mm. <coughs> hey. uh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Samara, can you probably unmute Pim as well? Be uh, yeah, because we are bouncing here to answer some questions. Yeah. Now. I, I have to um, step back from the table from this one. So, but welcome, welcome, Hannah. And, and just to note that you have actually changed your application slightly. So, yeah. We've, well, I, I know I've received a copy in the email and I'm sure everybody else has and read it as well. So, other than that, I can't see any more. I will depart for a second. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. And thank you very much that we have got the chance to present our proposal for Elevator Techie. Um, some of you probably might know me from some other organization that I have um, asked and presented before. And I am on the board or on the committee of Elevator Techie too. And we have been working over the last four years, really trying, as you all know, trying to make sure that Otechi gets um, a good benefit from opening up of the new expressway. Normally, Adrian, who's put the original application in, would have presented, but he's unfortunately not able to attend tonight. So I jumped in and do it for him. And actually, I missed out on the seat swap as well, what Tanya was just saying. Um, so um, you see the revised 
next um, breakdown of the projects, what we are planning. The main thing we are really asking for some support from the community board is to help us to do the digital advertising, some more um, going out with the message when the expressway will be opening and the um, public day, which is planned. And it was just really exciting to see before the presentation from PPP, PPTO, what is all coming up and what a great opportunity it is for Oteki. So we really want to share that, not only with the shops, but with the local community as well. And some of these things we are planning to do are the um, exposure to on the shop windows to promote our logo, which you probably all have seen this, um, probably should, I hope you can see it, which is the Oteki small town, big heart. We did earlier in the year a competition for that. And you can see when you're driving around Oteki on a lot of people, who have got these um, stickers now. So it's more and more becoming part that Oteki, Otekians really realize what a good opportunity this is and the Manaki Tanga and the small heart, the small town, but the big heart we are having to make people welcome. It will be an activity which is spread probably over several weeks, mainly probably two weeks, but some of the things will have got, of course, a longer lifetime like the um, decal displays in the shop and the new flags which we need to replace. You probably saw um, the flags which went up last year in November, which everybody, the shop owners and the community commented on how good it was, but they really have um, freight with the constant wind we had and the faded in the sun. So they need replacement as well. Um, the other thing, that's the main three areas we are asking in our revised budget plan we gave to you. And um, I'm just looking, yeah. So if there are any other questions, just fire away and let me know what you would like to know and to have a little bit more detail. You know, you can see too, Elevator Techie is spending about 25, the whole plan is about, includes $25,000. So any support we can get for this would really help and would help to extend our funds we have got available to last a little bit longer because it really needs more promotion continuously, even after the expressway opens up to make sure that people come back to Oteki and keep Oteki on their um, map. Okay, I see lots of fans. Okay, I'm not sure who was first because I stepped away from the table. So, Cam, thank you, Shelley. Cam. <laughs> the other fun thing is, Shelley, is when you point that way on my screen, you're pointing at Marilyn. Because <laughs> it's the other <laughs> way, in my, in my view. Um, but sorry, that's an aside. Um, kia ora, Hana. Um, thank you for coming along to speak tonight. Um, as you can know, the million dollar question uh, would always be is, um, why exactly does Elevate need funds from elsewhere? You somewhat answered that um, just after I put my hand up. Um, does Elevate see it as critical to receive funds from elsewhere um, when, I, when they do have funding themselves? Yes, I think we would really appreciate that to help us a little bit because we are going to spend about almost $40,000 as well on um, doing the special promotion to the shops with the, um, to find out what the shops really need and develop them to do the better marketing and really make sure that their clients stay with them. So this time it's going a little bit more to the general community because if we get the whole community excited as well, they will work as an ambassador for Oteki. And if everybody is happy, so they talk very positive about the town and that's what we want to create. And the flags made already such a difference last year and we want to really repeat this again. And unfortunately, this is quite a lot of costs involved to do all of those things. And the print advertising as well, which goes beside the digital advertising to reach really a wider audience. Thank you, Hannah. So does that answer your question, Cam?
Thank you, Samara or Fiona. Yeah. Um, yes, it does. Thank you, Anna. No okay, Shelley. Um, can I ask, Anna, how much money has Elevate Oteki got left of the 300,000? It will be roughly, after we subtract these things, roughly about $90,000, but that is to be lasting for another year. And there's lots of other activities being planned coming up to really make sure that the um, town is well advanced in the people's mind who used to come and new ones to attract them. There's, you know, we have spent money on some people to really do the liaison to all the shops and work it up. We worked most of our money in the past. We really have spent a lot on establishing the identity of Oteki and what we can be doing which all the other communities like Raumati and even um, Paraparam is working on now. And, you know, at the beginning, like Mike and I and Paraparam really missed out very much once the express bay was opened. And we really want to prevent that same thing happens here in Oteki. We know how important it is, especially in the time we have got now that the community really thrives and more opportunities for job creation will, will stay. So the shops and the community is very important. And we extended a little more of our promotion to the village as well, and not just only to the highway. Yeah, it was another question of mine. You've got the main yes. street. So, because Otaki is actually not just the railway. Oh, no. It's down in town as well. So is this, is this, going to be you know this project is about Oteki village as well as the railway yeah. town yeah yeah, yeah. So that will be the whole thing we don't like you know originally the money was given to really promote the highway but we realized you can't promote the highway we really want to get people to explore the whole of community the whole of Oteki going down to the village down to the beach to really get the feel for Oteki what about the businesses down, like the commercial businesses that need support as well? Have they been included in all of this? We are talking to them and bringing it up and we are encouraging very much that the shops will contribute to this campaign as well. So of the 90,000 you've got left after this campaign, what are your plans for that? Like, have you got a plan going forward for that spend? Can I just, um, I've been sitting here a long time as well. I'm part of the uh, Elevate thing. Um, can I just say that the uh, uh, the money we're asking for for this is um, is to, it's be, we, we recognise that there may be up to 20, from, from the last opening, there could be 20,000 20, people coming through. And so we're trying to, uh, grasp this opportunity um, when they are coming through on that weekend to to come and see not just the, the expressway or the alignment but also to see uh, the the state the the old state highway one shops and and any anywhere else that we can entice them to and it's up to the businesses of course to to invite them in as well so this is kind of over and above what we normally do to to try and get this that's why we thought um uh, an application here would be uh, relevant and um, what we're so, spending on in the future is that relevant can i just ask because the thing with autarky is that we have the opportunity to be kind of a destination for people on cycles and horses yes. and walking and stuff and so is elevate otaki actually concentrated much on the you know you you focus a lot on businesses but businesses will thrive if people come here for other things like walking, cycling, horse oh, riding, yes. and coffee. Yes. So what kind of promotion have you done around that? Well, the, I, I see it, that as our strength here is that we yes. have a lovely river, lovely yes. river walks, lovely beach, you know, and bring the people, the businesses will come. So I haven't seen a lot of promotion of that. Oh, have you not? The the Otaki identity um, isn't just for the businesses. The Otaki identity, which I, the reason I got on board in the first place was because I was so impressed with the fact that Otaki 
actually put together an identity because why can I, Parapram, all those other places haven't got those. And mm -hmm. an identity encompasses everybody, not just the State Highway 1 shop. So if they, I could see right from the start that they've gone a little beyond their remit to just look after the State Highway 1 shops to actually, which was what the funding was for, to actually encompass the whole of Ortaki. So I think we're very, very fortunate to have a very strong identity now. In fact, Raumati of they they're just starting to say, "Oh, we need to we need to sort out an identity." And they've gone to they've 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 talked to Elevate and said, "Well, you know, what did you do to get your identity? How did you manage manage to get that?" I think we're very very fortunate to to have done that, and that's kind of broadly encompassing everybody, not just the state highway one businesses. And um, Shelley, let me just jump in here and say, you know, definitely, you know, the walkway and the bridal way and all of them, this is very, very important. And it's all coming all together now. That will be all part of our continuous promotion to really sell probably or take it as a holistic, what everybody was using before in the energy field. Oteki is really a holistic um, destination. People can come, they can do the shopping. Shopping, nobody likes to admit, but shopping has always been very important on the list of the people. But there's all the activities. You know, you have got, you will have families coming along mm -hmm. when the kids go for a riding thing and you try to do the special um, riding camp this year over the Christmas holidays. The biking, I speak to so many bike people who can't wait till the thing is mm -hmm. out and come here and to spend the time. And we really want to make people aware of that, what they can be doing. There's so many opportunities that you people can stop along the whole stretch of the bike way. There might be even some little cafes popping up. There will be the art galleries which will be working. So it is just the person who is active will be coming, but the whole family will be coming. And they are spending the time here, probably stay, even staying overnight. So our main promotion at the moment is really to do probably this in the circle of two hours. So people will not always stay, but seeing that all the um, restrictions with COVID have come off now, so people will start longer again. If you look at the research mm -hmm. we've done, we found out that most people only really like to travel within the two hour radius because it's reasonably safe you come home again. But with the exposure we will be getting from the highway that will go out further. And it will be just all building up. It's just step by step. You know, it's very hard to promote something if it's not there, even if you say we will have these um, bridal ways and walkways, but it's now becomes tangible. It's really almost just around the corner. And there will be, we are just going to do a new photo, uh, photo shot as well. And there will be definitely active people showing what can be done here in Oteki. And Tehoro, you know, the whole strength the how lengths of the expressway. Okay, just to flag to you, and you're probably aware anyway, that the walkway, this the multi-use path is possibly not going to open till after the expressway is open for yeah, quite probably, a few months. Yeah, it could be a year yeah, more. Because, because of the, no, it won't be a year. It's probably no. likely a few months. Yeah, but, great. But yeah, they do I'm have problems around the Mary Crest crossing there and also just uh, um, Janice Hill who is Parks and Open Spaces has got plans to do um, she's hoping to do like a marathon type thing from the whole length of the expressway when the expressway oh, pathway wow. opens so that is cycling walking bridle and horses oh, so you much. might want to talk to her about her plans and incorporate an yeah. event around that as well because that will be quite cool so it's yeah, getting right. people from one end to the other that's, that's a really great opportunity and it's really good and you know elevator techie has always been about working together and pulling other people in and um it's so good to have this idea yep we'll pass that on and we'll definitely work more on that right no more questions of hannah or Pip. Okay, thank, thank you very much. It actually um, really sort of um, uh, 
spread out what, what the, the original application was. It made it a lot clearer and a lot more concise. Yeah. So thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, yeah, it was needed. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I, I went offline there for... Yeah, it's all right. We, we lip read. <laughs> um, next person on the list, Natalie Thompson, Dreamcatch Co-op. Thank you for your patience. Can everyone hear me? Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yep, where you awesome. go. <laughs> um, so I'm Natalie. I'm the secretary of the Dreamcatcher Co-op. Um, and we're a, I forget the name, oh, Incorporated Society. <laughs> um, we're a nonprofit community food cooperative. We're established in 2014. Um, we run entirely on member volunteer on a member volunteer system and no one profits from the co-op financially and no one's paid for our contributions. Uh, we urgently need repairs to our roof, which is badly leaking. And one of our members is a builder and he's kindly um, offered to do the labor pro bono to fix the, to repair the roof. Um, and everyone else would help under his supervision if needed. And we're applying for funds for the roofing materials. And so there's a few big leaks in the roof at the moment. And um, one, there's three rooms in our building. One room is completely unusable at the moment and is leaking quite a lot. And there's another leak above in a separate room, a second room of the three, um, over the computer and the admin kind of section. And so we've been, one woman in particular has been in charge of emptying buckets uh, um, every time it rains, which, as you can imagine, lately has been quite a lot. Um, yeah, the co-op exists to kind of first and foremost source affordable food and ideally local and organic food. And we believe that strengthening the co-op will be beneficial to the wider community for the food sovereignty. Um, and it's tries to, yeah aims to be really affordable and it's open to anyone that wants to join. Um, yeah, with the whole of our space available again, we're hoping to just be able to grow our membership, keep keep on keeping on, um, and keep on keep doing. We do little events similar to what um, was it Tanya was saying. They do pickling workshops. We recently just did a pickling workshop as well, um, and things like that. And so we're hoping we might receive some funding from you guys for our roof materials. Oh, thank you, Natalie. Does anybody have any questions of Natalie? Cam. Hello, oh, Natalie. Um, thank, thank you for waiting. <laughs> what, what, oh, what, what, what? Yes, that's the correct way to sum Shelley. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, back to Natalie. Um, so how many people are actually members of this, um, the food co-op, please? I think, I'm not, this isn't an exact, but I was thinking you'd probably ask this. Um, it was around 50 last I checked, but we do steadily get new members. So I'm, I'm going to say around 50, but it's I'd have to double check and I can definitely email you guys and let you know the exact number. Yeah, okay. Um, so 50 people, maths off from my head, that's is that $40 each if they were paying for this. Is there plans to try and do this anyway outside of this funding? We haven't gone there yet. We haven't discussed that. Okay. Thank you. That's all my questions. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Thank you very much, Natalie. Pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all your time. And the last person on the list today is Graham Fox. Good evening, Graham. Oh, hold on. Oh, yeah, I am on. Good evening, Graham. Unmute. Yes, Kira, good evening. It's been very interesting to sit through the community board meetings since I'm sort of applying to stand for it. So it's been interesting to see how it functions. Um, I decided just to put down a sort of aspirational narrative about what I was thinking of applying for. Um, we had a hui on the 6th of August um, with uh, Henry O'Keefe from the, he's a councillor from uh, the uh, uh, Hastings community uh, representing Flaxmere as a ward 
And I don't believe in reinventing the wheel. So we had him come in via Zoom to talk to about eight adults. And we had five children as well about uh, how they dealt with their social problems up in uh, Flaxmere. And uh, I was particularly, uh, what got me going was a couple of suicides in the town. And I also had another young person who was in uh, OT care who also killed himself a couple of years ago. So I was a bit sensitized to the whole suicide thing. And I have been involved, uh, living in Tamura Street, involved with that risk use for quite a few years. And uh, I, take in, I suppose I think like Tiffany, that there's huge social problems in, in our town, in this town, because I've never lived in a small town before I moved here in 2005. It's very different to living in the suburb of Wellington, where there's lots of government servants. So it was... Uh, so being a teacher for, for many years, I uh, am being involved in uh, social organisations. So with these recent suicides, I thought, well, I, I really should try and do something. And so we had Henry O'Keefe and another a friend of mine, uh, Peter Fanga from Out the Hut, talking about how to address social transformation in the community. So I put this aspirational idea together after having a couple of conversations with Chris about uh, maybe applying for some funding since there was money available. So um, uh, I decided not to go and fill all the forms. I've done that before when I applied for community board grants, but I just sort of, this is since my initial sort of application, just to put an aspirational idea out there about how um, we could address some of the social problems through a boxing academy, through hip hop dancing, and um, got some other ideas. I'd like to resurrect something like YouthQuest that used to be funded by the government. So I suppose that's about it. Right, thanks, Graham. I just say I actually don't recall actually having discussions with you on funding. I think we talked about you putting in an application for the board, and then you brought me a letter from some lady that on social housing. But but never mind, I may be mistaken. But I don't I don't recall having any discussions on. Well, this. you you, you said to me that there was forty thousand dollars sitting in this innovation grant, and I should put in for it. Oh, I don't think so, but never mind. Okay, Marilyn, you have a question. Yeah, thanks, Graham. I'm, I'm actually a little bit confused, to be fair, because right. you, I'm a little bit confused. Um, you're talking about the suicides and things, and then you're going on to talk about boxing academies and stuff, and I kind of get where that ties in. I'm just wondering what your qualifications are. What have you got to offer to these people, and, and what's this $500 actually going to be spent on? Right, the five hundred dollars is uh, Henry O'Keefe uh, has suggested we come up to Hastings <clears throat> and have a look at what they've been doing. They've been working for twenty years in Flaxmere, addressing their social problems because they've got lots of gangs and you know other sort of issues in Flaxmere. He says they've got the lowest crime rate in Hastings now, but it's been a twenty-year project. So it's more of just going to find out what how they have addressed their social problems through things like the boxing academy that they have up there and other programs. So I was going to take some of the community leaders up there to have a look. And because I say, I don't believe in reinventing the wheel. If there's places that are addressing their problems with lots of success, then maybe some of those programs can be established down here. Like Tiffany said, the more programs we've got down here, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, so, so you're going to go up there and you're going to have a look. And then when you come back, what are you going to do about it? Uh, right. I'm just, what, what are your qualifications? What have you got to offer these people that are... That are well, I've worked in education at, uh, at Welltech. Originally, when I went there, it was called Petoni Tech. So I was there for 23 years. So my background is teaching and education in a professional sense. But then I worked in broadcasting for 15 years at Radio New Zealand. So... And I run a local station here, so I'm, I'm interested in filmmaking, broadcasting. I'm, I'm a people person, so I've been working with young people for 40 years, pretty much. Yeah, I'm still struggling to understand how this is going to help those troubled youth that are self-harming or suicidal or whatever. I'm, right, I'm, well, I'm struggling to marry it together. Okay, well, from what my understanding with the boxing thing, it's a lifestyle thing, it's a mentoring thing. We have lots oh. of kids that maybe had broken homes, don't have fathers, so it's when, um, from what I've seen of the Billy Graham organisation who I've been in contact with, they are providing a, a whole way of life for those young people. It's, you know, physical fitness, it's the boxing, it's mentoring, it's the lifestyle thing. 
So getting into the face of those kids in a, in a program that doesn't just happen one night a week, it's probably five nights a week or whatever. So I would see that that would be, particularly with boys, and I was talking to the lady from the Cavity Boxing Club, she said, what about girls? And I said, yeah, I'm, girls if want to do boxing, that's cool as well. So um, I would see that, yeah, it's a holistic approach to that. And with the hip hop thing, there's, uh, it, there's a lot of appeal with hip hop dancing to particularly Maori and Pacific Island kids. So again, I would see that as, um, and it leads to careers, it leads to challenging and it's goal involves goals. And it's done as a discipline sort of thing, like boxing is done as a discipline sort of thing. So it's leading to away from dysfunction to functional behavior. So do you see yourself as like the coordinator of a program where you'd have other people running the programs or are you going to run the programs yourself? No, no, I'd see myself as just as maybe organising the funding and organising the staffing and letting them go for it. You know, I'm 62, so I'm not that interested in dealing with youth directly, but I would see my role as in terms of administration and getting funding organised and, and getting the key people to be involved in doing the teaching and delivery of the programs. Do you know any of those key people yet? Do you know who you would tap, who you would shoulder tap to put into those positions? Uh, well, I've been in touch with the uh, company NZ, the dance company that works out of the National Dance School. I went and saw them and I, I basically just put proposals through to them. I've been in discussion with one of their um, leading founders of that uh, Hip Hop Dance Academy. And as uh, I've spoken to people at the a lady at the uh, the Capity Boxing Club, and she's also suggested I get in touch with the Billy Graham. Um, what's exactly called Youth Foundation? I've been in touch with uh, the guy that's the CEO there by email. But until I know if I've got some money, there's not much point in taking it further. Though I would aim to, even if we don't get a grant from the community board, to, to kick something off up here in Otaki. Yeah, I personally would struggle funding something that's not tangible yet. Right. That's a personal thing. I, no, that's cool. Yeah. That's why I put in the, the grant, the re request for five hundred dollars, so we could actually go and do some more research up at um, up at Hastings and see exactly what their programs involve and what what mm. could be transferred down to here. Because I mean, five hundred would only just basically cover the petrol and costs of transport there and back. Thank you for that. Thanks, Marilyn. Now, Cam, you had your hand up, Shelley. You're taking it down again. Okay, Cam. Um, kia ora, Graham. Thank you for waiting so long. <laughs> it's okay. Last but not least, um, just with the thousand dollars for the boxing academy and the thousand for the hip hop dancing, what do you envisage that thousand being spent on? Um. Maybe costs of uh, travel for for um, people who are providing the pro, you know, or teaching the programs and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I don't know that um, in terms of equipment for the hip hop dancing, I've got sound systems in my broadcasting background. We can certainly provide them sound systems and that sort of thing. Um, I was looking at, uh, yeah, so. I haven't spelled it out specifically, but I thought thousand dollars would go a long way towards uh, providing staffing costs and transport for people who are coming up from Wellington or other parts to to provide uh, the teaching and the programs and that sort of thing. Okay, thank you, Graham. Thank you. Any more questions? No. Thank you, Graham. Thank you for okay. your time. And sorry, you had such a long, long wait. Okay. Bye. Bye. Right. Oh my gosh. Now, before we go on, does anybody need a comfort stop? A cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> no one needs to go and um okay. <laughs> That's fine. You do, Shelly. Do you want to unmute Shelly for a sec? Yeah, unmute me. What about the three people who applied for community grants? Well, no, we decided that because we had all these other people. We just went oh. through them. We got your got your comments. Oh, and, okay. And okay. Cam and I, yeah. Cam, myself, and Marilyn were together yesterday. So okay. Yeah. yeah it was just with tonight being such a long night. It yeah. was just far easier not to have them have to sit through all this. Fair so enough. it was yeah. So it was just just an experience thing. 
So, okay. I'll yeah, I'll go. Will you go? We'll give you a minute. Yeah, no, it's same, same. Okay, off you go. Um, you can probably unmute everybody now, Fiona. It might be a little bit easier now that we've got all that out of the way. I just figured with all those people, it was easier just to have one person verbal at the time at a time. So yeah, I've, I've changed the security settings. So um, when everybody pops back, just let them know that they'll be able to um, unmute themselves. Yeah. Um, and just um, you've still got Natalie Thompson sitting in the meeting as well. So um, okay, right. We don't need to, um, we won't be, where is it? Where are we? Oh, go away, you silly screen. Keep touching the wrong thing. Oh, there it is. Oh. Okay, so we just, we're just down to board members and staff now. There's no... Yes, that's right. There's nobody else in the meeting now, just staff and um, the board. That's good. Makes it a little bit easier. But of course, we are, we are still recording. Yes, so yeah, that yes, the members absolutely. of the public that have already yes, retired yes. to bed for the evening can yes. check in tomorrow. <laughs> they can come in and listen to everything we've said. And um, just a reminder, while oh. you're taking a break as well, that if you get um, closer to 10.30, you will need to pass a resolution um, to allow you to continue beyond that time. Okay, well, let's see if we can just speed things up a little, eh? So, and but should we need it, you've got wording that you can get ready yeah. to go, Fiona? I will by 10.30, Janice. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> well, hopefully if we do have to go past 10.30, it won't be too much past 10.30. We'll make it a bit snappy, I think. So, is everybody back yet? Everybody has been just waiting on Marilyn. I mean, I, I snuck off while Hannah was talking. I thought I'd take the opportunity there. So, I hope that's water, Janice. <laughs> yeah, so it's is indeed water, so is mine. I promise. Yeah. yeah, so is mine, unfortunately. Okay, we're all back. Okay, so where are we up to now? Let me have a look. Oh, we've done that. Members busy. Uh, we've done, have we got any sure. public speaking responses? No. I think we might just need to note there, uh, Chris, about the petition that it will, oh. um, I, I'll, I'll put some wording there if, if I haven't covered it in the previous mm. bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is not clear. confused. There wasn't really a petition. What was the petition? We so the petition was circulated. About a week ago, and there was a. Got it in the email. Mm. Came in the came in the email. It Charlotte. wasn't in the in the yeah no I was confused about that. It was a sep was a separate email. It's just the very brief wording at the very top before the mm. list of names. Mm. Oh no, yeah. I sent it as an email prior to the meeting. Mm. Yeah, did come as an email, but it wasn't a, there wasn't a huge amount of it. Most of it was names. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really what I would just, call a petition. Hmm. Well, it's probably also affected landowners in the area. Hmm. Uh, I would like to know why I asked them about the feedback from Greater Wellington is whether Greater Wellington actually wants or how high a priority is this? Because hmm. they're just trying to get it moved up. And so some other project would have to be moved back for them to be moved forward. Hmm. Yeah. You know? But I think and we it's should not, have it's not up to us to set priorities. We should have some feedback from Greater Wellington because maybe they've assessed it and it's not as a, much of a priority as the mm. people in that area think. Mm. You know, like actually we, we um, it's not our area. Oh, no, I don't, I don't think it's, it's, it's ours as, as well. It's, um, I mean, it's but, concerning but, if it's starting, but can we get some feedback? Can we get Greater also, Wellington staff to give us some feedback? Well, that's what we've been asking for. So that's what we asked for in the initially, for them to for the these for the people in the petition to actually go to Greater Wellington and they'll come back. So, but we've put we've we've agreed to it in, in principle that yes, possibly, but we're having it in the minutes, noting it, and letting the the next community board actually deal with it because it's with, with this one meeting. There's nothing we can really do. We could put it 
we could put it on our action list or whatever, but the next community board may not wish to do that. So I don't think we should actually put that onto onto a board that, that isn't formed yet. And that so, guy didn't actually know who he was petitioning. Yeah. He no. He didn't know if Guru was the mayor of council or mm. the Greater Wellington or mm. where he, he was. Seemed, he seemed quite confused. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, I'm and, confused. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And also, yeah. it's um, it's people that have, that have got houses right on right on the beachfront, and it's becoming a huge problem now with climate and everything. And I know insurance companies are now sort of getting a bit tight on people like you know that, that are building close to places. So it's a can of worms we may not wish to open. Um, so okay, so public speaking responses, no leave of absence. <laughs> <laughs> leave of absence seems a bit sort of. Uh, I don't, well, we're all we're all leaving, technically leaving. We're technically leaving, <laughs> we're technically leaving the board of October. <laughs> Matters of an urgent nature, none. Okay, now the nitty gritty, teethy bit. Um, consideration of application funding. Shall we whip through the um, just the grants funding that we had? And bearing in mind, we've all we've all read them. We've all seen them. Um, these are so the this ones. Is, so this these, is the first report, Chris. The, yeah, this isn't the um, the the ones we've just listened to. This is just the report the, eight point one. Yeah, yeah, those ones. Now, um, I we think report, generally we report we all we've we've all sort of agreed that that they're all worthy cause. My only thing, my only question is to Janice, perhaps with the Otaki Sports Club. The Otaki Sports Club has other clubs in it. So they're not, even though there's two applications that look like they're from the Otaki Sports Club, they're different arms of it. They're actually different sports. So we're actually okay approving those two as individuals. What happened with Cam's query about the balls from last year? I suppose they go through balls, do they? Oh, yeah, they go through balls like, no. Oh, yeah, tennis balls don't last long. So I, I think will look they said that they had those were oh, look, I think in, in, in response to your question, Madam Chair, um, as you've acknowledged, there are a number of different sort of subsections of the club. Um, you always have your discretion as a board to grant something that isn't entirely consistent with your criteria. So I think with that in mind, if you see value um, in granting for you know essentially what feels like two possibly separate or individual grants for the same organization i, th I think it's within your discretion to do that oh, okay. there's, there's, there's three clubs which all yeah. share an umbrella name and and sort of admin on top but they're quite separate sports and mm. operate relatively independently yeah yeah they just happen to be all working out of the same yeah, right, same sports facility. Okay, well, what's good, is everybody in agreement that if I move all of the recommendations A through to E as a... Can I just ask about the Kim Tahiwi application? Yeah, which one is that? Uh, uniforms. It's for those uniforms. sweatshirts. Oh, yeah. They're not, they're not uniforms, they're post yeah, yeah. netball season, nice to haves. And I just think, yeah. We could get a lot of them. It would be almost nicer if they applied it before the start of the mm. season. And to help I know. Well, but, even, but, even, but even then, you know, how many netball teams are there at Otaki College? Oh. And then Whakatū Paranga, um, you know, all those um, primary schools, because it's a young team. Yeah. And it's not actually for going away. You know, they're not going to a tournament. Netball season is over. They are going to a tournament at the mm. end of September. Yeah. Where is yeah. that? I for, um... Yeah. The only way I... to securing a final spot. Mm. This is just this is just my way of rewarding their hard work. So they're on the way to securing a final spot. Mm. Did they get through? Um, I don't know yet whether they've played it or not. On the 2nd of September. They... I've received an email, sorry, I thought, and I should, should have forwarded that on that. I said, um, did you need the sweatshirts for a tournament at the end of August? And she says at the end of September. Mm. So does that, what does that change your thinking, Shelley? Mm, no. So we have, we have mm. done it before. So we're not setting a precedent. We have actually done it before. 
I wouldn't expect a, a flood or every single person no. to or every single team to now start applying. Mm. Yeah. I just I just don't know. I don't see the reason why they, you know, it's just a nice to have, but okay. Marilyn, how do you feel? Are you happy with it? Well, I kind of feel like Shelley. It's a nice to have and is it necessary? But then if they go if they're going to a tournament, mm. it'd be nice for them to all look the same. So I'm um, I'm I'm happy to approve it, but kind of feel like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if they weren't going to a tournament, I think I'd yeah. agree mm. with um, Marilyn and Shelley too. But I think the fact they're going to a tournament. I don't have the uniform. It would be interesting to know what the tournament is, though, because it might just be an end of season tournament, which they often have, like a round robin. Uh, I'm I'm not sure. I might I haven't played. You know, I've been involved in netball this year. It's just that. Um, hmm. I'm struggling with that. One. Okay. Well, you can. Good. Okay. Well, do we want to move them as a group, or do we want to? Talk that one out separately. So if we move, which is the netball no, one? Well, if you guys, if you guys are going to vote, for it, that's I'm, fine. Well, I'm, I'm, as I say, I'm, I'm the same. They're going to a tournament. I think it'd be nice if they all look the same. Agreed. Yeah, and we have done it. We aren't setting a precedent because we have done it before. Oh, all right. So you're happy to do okay. that, Christine? I'm happy to second that. Okay. No, well, I was going to move them all as a block. Yeah, exactly. No, okay. Thank, thank you very much. So that's the move as a block, Samara, for their full grants, and Cam has seconded it. Is there any more discussion on that on any of the others? No. Okay. All those in favour? Awesome to see some photos of them in the in the uniform at the tournament. Yeah, well, that, well, yes. Well, perhaps we can go. It's perhaps. only it's, it's it's a college sweatshirt. That's all mm. it is. Yeah. Or a uniform. Yeah. But um, okay. Right, where are we up to? So I'm just playing with my papers here for the moment. There's so damn many of the jolly things. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Paper heavy oh, meter. Time, time heavy as well. And we're going to probably have to move into extra time. Unless can I, can Chris, for that report, the report coming up, can I make some comments, please? Yeah, go for it. So the um, initiatives funding grant um, that's before you, um, I split, flipped in an email just to let you know on paragraph 21 that Māori Land um, had asked for 19,981, but there was a typing error in the report that said they only wanted 1,900. So mm. um, Yeah, I saw, I saw that email. Um, mm. The other thing we will need to do when we're going through this report is if... Um, if the application is declined, um, there will need to be a reason. And um, Jenna suggested to the chair that um, the board may want to talk to the unsuccessful people um, to um, explain why the application wasn't um, mm. gone through. And also with the applications that have gone through, they need to have a board member attached to them, mm. um, which... Um, I'm not sure how we'll do that with a we'll, new we'll, we'll board. We can, um, can we actually, after this meeting... Sign them now and then reassign. Yeah, but can we just reass can we reassign it outside this meeting, Janice? Can we do that? We don't have to do it tonight. We can actually... No, I think I think um, as long as it's something that can get sorted fairly quickly yeah. tomorrow, because people will mm. be keen to know. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, just, I think given the nature of the fund and that mm. this is a specific community board initiative it's it's um it's really appropriate for you guys to then mm. take the lead in terms of communicating yeah. with the applicants yeah that's fine well i can get on to it tomorrow and um get everybody sorted but probably not until after lunch we might still be here at lunchtime mm. okay. We might still be here at lunchtime. Fine, at this rate, I think we might. I'm a night owl. I'm up for a couple of hours yet. Yeah. I also have well, a spreadsheet uh, that I'm sitting on my computer that I can enter in numbers well, so you can work out. Uh, um, well, yeah. well, I've, I've, well, let's just see, I've got my own spreadsheet how, up as well. Let's just see how we're going. <laughs> we'll yours. Um, we'll see how we're going. We might be able to sort some of it tonight, at least get some of them out of the way tonight. And, I mean, because yep. Shelley works, Shelley's working full time, so she's going to find it rather tough to do any tomorrow during the day. 
So let's just see how, how we go and, and who can do what. But let's, let's um, sort out the ones that are successful from the ones that aren't. Now, after the presentations, does anybody have any they would like to add or take away from the discussion we have previously had? Is there anything that's um, come up that makes you want to vote yeah, different? Or? There's a couple of things. I really, really like what Tiffany is trying to do. I have big concerns in that it's just her by herself under no umbrella organisation. So there's the a lack of support for her and potential for you know, things to go as she sees on a woman. Um, but what she's actually doing, I really like. Mm. Um, so I'm sort of conflicted there. I, I really support what she's doing, but I'm concerned about throwing money at her yeah. and in case it just goes pear-shaped. Mm. Mm. Yeah. No, not sustainable, I wouldn't think. She no. needs to go and work with people like mm. Tania, um, yep. Hakaraya and Kaibosh and get food. And, you know, like mm. she's trying to almost invent the wheel of what's already going on in Ōtaki because there is the Rangatahi program, which got nearly a million dollars from mm. government funding to put kids through. And I know she's trying to do more than that, but she really needs to go and put her <laughs> ideas to organisations that can make a service yeah. out of it. Because it's, yeah. you know, I don't know. I was texting someone at the time who was in the meeting, I won't say who, um, who is very involved with all of that, who hasn't really heard about her. So I'm wondering where all the iwi, um, you know, the referrals are coming from and there's no, she's got no qualifications, it doesn't seem. Well, well, Shelley, would you would you like to take that one on and call her? No. You seem to have all the you seem to, well, you seem to well you um, seem to know all the contacts that <laughs> well, I was just asking someone if they knew of her. Mm. So why don't yeah. we it's almost why, don't like, we pick, why don't we pick the ones that we're going to support first? Yeah. That would be good so and just, then we could get a handle mm. on how much money we've got. Mm. Just, just a background, Samara, Fiona and Janice. We had a meeting last on Wednesday. Um, and to be honest, there was $139,000 applied for, but we were struggling to even do you know, over 10 grand, particularly because so many of them were actually putting asking for money towards assets. Oh. So mm -hmm. things like the, yeah. um, the kitchen, uh, which is, you know, at that point in time was $20,000, the um, was it the cabin for um, zero waste? Zero waste, zero otaki. Waste. You know those sorts of things. As far as we could tell from a strict point of view, they're all generating assets. Even Tiffany with her um, fishing rods and bits and pieces um, was still generating assets. The elevate one at that point in time was buying hanging baskets and bits and pieces. Um, the thing with Tiffany is she's saying she's going to go to Carpety with all those people for seven hundred fifty dollars. I don't think she can do an overnight yeah. there for that. She ain't going. I don't think it's overnight. She's a trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I've just found it all very odd and kind of. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, why don't we tick the ones oh. off that we wanted to see? Yeah. Right. Well, right. Well, oh, I've, I've got the ones that we've yep. sort of said a yes to. So I've got. Ruth McKenzie and the Capri Light Orchestra. Bob, how much? Energize all techies. Yep, that was can, $900. Um, Chris, can you yeah. slow down? And no, just I'm not, no, no, I'm just going through them first just to check before we do the amounts, just to check that everybody's on the same page. Kirsty Doyle, Otaki Promotions. Uh, now, has anybody had any other thoughts on Elevate? I'm, still I'm, I'm struggling with I'm that not. because they've had so much money. And we've yeah. got so many other people wanting money for projects that haven't got that money. And yeah. I know they're doing a great job. I, but I think right. if Elevate had run out of money or are about to run out of money, then that would be more applicable. But given they have the funds there at the moment, they just need to make sure they're using them wisely. They have gone through a truckload of money, eh? If they've only yeah. got 90 grand. Well, they had, they had an employee for a year. They've spent yeah. a lot of money. On the identity and bits and pieces. Yeah, it's been it's been well spent. Yeah, yep. honestly. Yep. Okay, now okay. we've got. So the, we, we were um, doing the yeses. 
Yeah, we got. Yeah, that's what I'm just. I'm just running through them, not without doing the money just yet, just until we once we get to it. Okay, and so we've got Tanya Hackeride just for those workshops, which was five grand, I think. Otaki College. We thought about if we had any spare to give them something, you know, whatever a bit left over or something. And Paul Groovy, the the pad tennis guy. Now, after he spoke, I just wondered if anybody had any whether to go ahead and, and perhaps give him something, well, I don't know. Why don't we, why don't we go through the ones we were going to? Which was it, well, Ruth? They, they, yeah. Tanya? They, well, just... yeah, yeah, sorry, Christine, you're jumping around a lot. Yeah. We yeah. were going to just quickly note the ones we're saying yes to. From well, it was Cavity Lights. Was four of them. Yep. It was Cavity Lights. Yeah. Energize All Tacky. For the bikes, yep. O Tacky Promotions. Yep, for the Christmas lights. Um, and the five thousand dollars for the for, workshops for Tanya for, for, for the Tanya. workshops. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, those were the definite yeses. Yes. So we did talk right. about OTAC promotions and supporting the whole lot, which was two eight, when they'd only applied for two thousand. So, what are we going to do there? Uh, I had noted on my spreadsheet three nine. Three yeah, that's, what there, I, that's what I've I got down too. Okay, I'm happy. But if. Yeah. <laughs> Three, nine. Let's just, why don't we keep, because that was the balance of the four, their four and a half budget, less what they've received already. Can I just make a comment that previous oh. applications that we've done over the years that um, what would the we amount we them asked up. for, no. um, yeah. we haven't gone above, just, okay. no, yeah. sometimes yeah. it's a little well, bit, asked, not that much. They've asked for two. Yeah, so let's I just leave it at two. Leave it at two. Because other people might question it if we. Yeah, leave it at two. Yeah, particularly, you know, you could see that I have a conflict of interest yeah. there. So, and I go, oh, Cameron's associated with something that got extra money. So okay, and the, the Ruth McKenzie and the Cavity Light Orchestra, they'd ask for $900. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Are we meant to be moving and seconding these or? Well, we, we could just probably do them as a group. We do them as how a much, block. How much was Energize Otaki? Hold on, I'm, I'm just so late. late. Energize Otaki was 2.8. Oh. eight. <coughs> so we're all happy with that one? Yeah. And Tanya Hakurai was $5,000 towards the workshops. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I also was a bit surprised that they had already got the kitchen and because normally we don't fund things retrospectively mm. um, now but the, it's a moot point it's an asset anyway the, the, the other thing well, is, is this is different because it's an initiative and what they're doing is they're trying to do an, initi uh, an initiative for the town <laughs> food you know uh, kind of initiative but still an they, don't have, they don't have the plumbing so we could support them in the plumbing but that's capex. That's still capex. Plumbing is still capex because it's, it's, install it's installation. If it was repairs and maintenance later, maybe. Yeah, but is it but, for this ground uh, too? It's, it's, yes? it's capex. It's capex. Yeah, but it's not ca it's yeah. not council capex, is it? No, yeah. but um, so uh, the um, the guidance that we sent round to start to community boards made it clear that this was operating expenditure, not capex, and we can't spend opex on. Capex, even if even if it's somebody else's capex expenditure, we can't we can't put our opex towards somebody else's capex. Yeah, and we um, and it was out there on the form, and it was put out there in the um, the, the information that was sent out. I think if we give them five grand, it's it's seed funding, and they've got a really good thing going. And, uh, yeah, no, but, yeah, and that's them, what we agreed on. Yeah, but we're giving them the five grand, not as seed funding, to actually run. I know, but it's it's part workshops. of the whole program, Christine. So they really so they can apply for funding for the whole program, which is their workshops and their kai collecting and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. but the five yeah. grand has to be used on the workshops. They can't then get yeah. it and then spend it on the kitchen. Mm. So and in the resolution, so, yeah. So in the resolution, it will read that there are granted five thousand dollars for uh, workshops as, yeah. as the as monthly workshops and the yeah, and, and and they they need to actually report back to us or something that they have actually done them because 
we, so we, part of we, the part of the criteria is a community board member working with them through it, and then they have to report back. Yeah, I'm happy yeah. to work with Tanya on that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, sorry good. to interrupt you all on that as well. Um, we're coming up really close to 10.30, so you will need to pass a resolution in order to continue the meeting beyond that time. Um, I sent through some wording to Samara for you to consider. Yeah, it was fine. So that, I'm checking that. So yeah. it's, it's just that we resolve to continue the meeting beyond 10.30 in order to complete the consideration of applications for funding as it's the last meeting of the training and the remaining matters for consideration cannot be adjourned to a future meeting. Yep, thank you. I will move yeah. that. And yeah. Are you going to stay awake tomorrow? Thank you. Yeah. Trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm so now we've chosen things. the ones that we want. Should we work from the front and go through? Yeah, just go through in the order. Right. So we get it done. So we've got. So we've got all the ones that are not. Uh, so. We're going to go through the order. Sorry, yes. could I just chip in here, Madam Chair? Can I encourage yes. you to, um, um, because this is um, captured on video and will live on mm. the website for as long as websites are a thing, um, can I encourage you to state a reason um, for why any applications are declined as you go through these one by one, yep. please? Okie okay, dokie. Okay. Right. Now, mine are a bit out of order now. So, well, Samara, have you got the order? No, no, hold on. I've all I've got to just turn them up the other way because I put them down upside down, put them upside down on each other. Would it help if I shared my screen that I'm working off the spreadsheet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would work. yeah yes, please. Perfect. Can you see that now? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah just. Okay so. okay, so I take your promotions group. So, so that's Moved a, a yes. That, that's all done. So you're Look. moving and seconding as yes, we go I'll through? Yes, I'll move that we I'll take the motions group. Cam, you can't. I'll, I'll second can't. it. I'll second it. Thank you. So obviously we don't have to give a reason. So I'll just, I'll put I'll everything in here and then I'll change it into the minutes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Now we've got Laura. Laura, yeah. Laura Lavely. And who's, who's gonna say so you work with well she's a no because she doesn't yeah. know what she wanted really yeah but yep. no what we're gonna do is give a reason now shelly we've already had the discussion yeah so laura so, with a court down, was down it? the beach yep. um no insufficient information, information or insufficient costing um and mm. also we believe it to be a parks um, yeah, but I've got parks and open spaces, and perhaps she can apply to the annual plan or the long term plan. Yeah. Okay, we've got that one. Yep, because what I'll do is then you, a later date and tomorrow you guys can work out who will go. Yeah. Space and... Okay, Cameron Wishing and Woke Budgeting. Uh, that's to me, that's sort of. Um... He was a no. Has anyone changed their mind? Yeah. No, he's setting up his own business, quite frankly, and mm -hmm. he really hasn't liaised. He might, he may have spoken to some teachers at the college, but Andy certainly didn't know anything about it when, when both I spoke to him and and Shelley. So our reason can't be that he's setting up his own business. I suppose we say that um, lack of need to put a zero consultation, in the with, oh. lack mm. of consultation with the. Apparent lack of consultation with local. Yeah. Sorry, why can't we say that he's just he's he can. Own business? We, we don't we don't fund we don't fund someone's business. Um, because he actually commented that he was looking at setting up a charitable trust to govern us. We've got we've got no we've well. got no evidence. Well, I asked him that mm. he was making a, a small profit, which mm. I don't have a particular issue with. The main issue I was a no for this is I'm not hundred percent sure why think that the school could do it themselves. Yeah. That they, well, they are, basically that's what they are doing. The schools, yeah. After talking to the schools, they seem to be doing this themselves. So well, is that the reason you want me to put? Yeah, yeah, put that. Yeah. Um, the school is able to provide mm, the service. Right. Right. Ryan E. Rogers. Uh, she's uh she was the was she the voice one? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, being through breathing and voice, she was a no. Yeah. Um, Previously. Well, it's almost the same thing. Uh, she's, she is, was she, has she actually got something set up or not? So this is, yeah, this is her business. So she's yes, applying for the yes. funding to provide it at zero cost. Yeah, um, for her business, yeah. So is that enough of a reason, Samara? Can you just repeat that? Sorry, I was having a drink of water. <laughs> I think there's also probably a little bit of, we, we're not, we don't all believe in that you make people better by breathing and singing. Don't think we can say that. But when, when we can't oh, say that, no. Either, no. Um, but it's, um, it's her personal business hmm. and we yeah, just can't, we, can't fund that because we have, we'd have every other person coming wanting we can, all, we, can also, we can also say, like with um, the other one, insufficient um, planning with the local schools because she hasn't, she doesn't seem to have been there. and She hasn't actually yeah. coordinated with anybody, really. No. no. Correct. Yeah. To, be, to be fair, it's pretty hard with the time limit that people had, but, you know, none of these. Yeah. But she might be able to do a bit more research, a bit more coordination and apply yeah. again. In this, in this yeah. yeah. Okay. Kids needs dads. Well, that was a definite no from me. What about Pat tennis? Pat tennis. Pat tennis. I've got kids needs dads next. Yeah, we're looking at the screen. Yeah, we're looking at the screen. Oh, the screen, are we? Oh, I got yep. Pat tennis. Oh, God. Because I've got all mine set up in order here. Yeah. Him down and look at the screen. Yeah, I know, but I'm looking at my phone. Um, I really didn't like the fact that he was trying to get us to pay to hire his own equipment. Really? Yes. Good. No. I've noted like that from my question. Yeah. No, I. I and he yeah. said it would go ahead anyway. I did suggest yeah. to him in our conversations that um, that fund, because he'd seen it was coming up, I said they do have a sporting activity grants fund. If you wanted to apply for that in one of the rounds for the next training, and you're more than welcome to. Yeah. Um, mm. And from an OPG point of view, we wouldn't have what we wouldn't have anything to do with these guys. There's nothing, nothing associating between a kite festival and paddle tennis. We also wouldn't want people walking around giving out flyers. So at your um, event, yeah, yeah. You also noted that he would could get the court painting done for free. Yes, um, mm. weird, and that? again, he's was applying. It? Yeah. It did um, seem, seem very strange to yeah. me that he was sort of saying he was doing it for free, yeah. and then all of a sudden he wanted he wanted yeah. uh, money for the paint and the and the and the work and yeah. So, so so part of the reasons I would be saying no is the um, inconsistencies in um, the money that was applied for, i.e., you know, hiring their own stuff. Um, and he it was interesting that he was saying that the court was the court down there was perfect and it was great and it was lovely. This is awful. Yeah. So yeah, I actually think he should just be working with the tennis club. I do too. And there's well, also, there. he was going to then on. move up to domain and paint on there. So why not just start there? Mm, yeah, that's right. Yep. You yeah, know, it's like why not start in one spot which has got a yep. better facility? Yeah, mm. and probably the SMR also suggests that he applies potentially for the supporting grants from the, mm. for the next board meeting. The thing is, he can still, if the council's willing, he can still get those paternus things put on that court. But the thing is, he hasn't engaged either with the community down there about what they want. That might get painted on there and there might be a big backlash to the, to the council about people who don't want those yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's moving on because time's marching on. Okay, we're yeah. up to uh, energize old energize old techie. Well that was a we're, yes. Yep, we're a yes with that. Yep. You need I'm to happy to second that. put that forward. Thank you. I'll There's second it. Pam and Marilyn. Yep. yep. Okay. Kids needs dads. See, now that he explained that those murals would actually be in Otaki. Yeah, but he's also put in a, for that. He's put, in a, he's put in a duplicate application to Parapara Umu Community Board who haven't had their meeting yep. yet. It's more centred around Parapara Umu, so that's my reasoning yeah. for saying no. It's, it's Most of it's happening down in Parapara Umu. 
Yeah. There's no guarantee yeah. that there'll be many kids from old tacky partaking. There's no guarantee that the murals will be on any yeah. of our schools. But our schools seem to actually do all that sort of thing themselves. I know Tiporo School have done their own. Mm. So, he, is only, um, he is only applying for 1500 yeah. out of the total cost of mm. over $7,000. Mm. I would have been saying, put $1,500, but it has to go towards Project B, which mm. is the one where there uh, will actually be yeah. engagement in the yeah. Ontaki area. Yeah, but the thing is, he hasn't even engaged with the schools. That's no. lack, yeah, lack, yeah, yeah, yeah. lack of community engagement yeah. or engagement with schools oh. is no reason because he hasn't been there. He's not going to get those kids in November and December on no. buses on yeah. a school trip right. because the school is flat stick in December. Yeah. There's so much going on that ain't going to happen, I can tell you right, right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Right. So, and I think so he's, yeah, be a, a zero for that. Yeah, he's, he's applying to Parabaro Community Board, so let them fund it. Mm. Yep. So Tiffany is a zero. Yeah. And I guess the reason there is that we'd like to see it under an umbrella organisation rather than a, an yeah. individual. Mm. And you can always encourage you. Sustainability you. because it just seemed like it wasn't sustainable. You know, no. And she's still, she hasn't really got anything concrete set up. But she's working from basically from home. She's not working all... with any of the, uh, like for an autarchy, she's not working with Tupuna Oranga or the schools. It's just kind yeah. of yeah. anyone who comes to her, which is, mm -hmm. you know, it's fine. You've got to with a very big and, and quite frankly, there's a real lack of accountability for if we gave her the money, I think, yeah. because... Well, I think that's where you would have, you know, the community board member that's working with them, working mm. with her on the accountability side of things. Mm. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I think the, the reason still stands is that... Because, mm. remember, you do it. have the opportunity, um, whoever's on the board, the next round, the next, the next training, that if you do have the second round of this grant, those people that are working with, talking to the declined people, have the opportunity to keep that relationship going and yeah. um, help, help them look at something else that will be feasible out of that grant. Mm. Mm. Right. Right. Now, what's the next RSA? one? RSA. Well, it's CapEx. Uh, we just can't do yeah. it, so, basically. Yeah. If they'd done it a bit differently and maybe made it for something else, yeah, maybe, but we just can't pay, yeah. pay up CapEx. So that's cut and dry. Yeah. By yeah. High, high wellness. So that's uh, long winded non answering. Yeah. Yes. It, yes. Um, it's, I, I, um, the reason I asked about the split of the projects is because I, I mean, I have a personal thing with the dementia side of things because my mum was in complete la la land. Um, though, oh, how much does yoga and the like help people with dementia? I have no idea. Well, it wouldn't have helped my mother. Yeah. Um, again, this is her business, and I know mm. it's helping to get these things out to the community for free. Um, but yeah, I'm just not. I think always... it would have been better if she'd had the school apply for mm. her to come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's a good point, Shelley. So if the school wanted, because that's when I talked to. Uh, why so the school, school would apply to them. They, they were costs. talking about a program, this exact same same thing. Mm -hmm. and it seems like she's been talking to lots of people around town. So maybe it's her program, but maybe if the schools are looking at it, they could come. I'll, talk, I'll ring um, Maine back and say, you know, what are you looking at? And maybe you can apply in the next round as the schools for a collective program. That would yeah. help the kids. Yeah, that's, yeah. Possibly, that's yeah. Rather than, yeah, because it seems she seems, and um, she seems like a very, very good qualified person. It's just, yeah. Mm. But that's it. We, if we don't spend it all tonight, we can, we, we've got to, when do we, when does the next, when does the rest of it have to be spent by? We have another round early next year. June. Mm -hmm. June next year. So that's yeah. it. The so people, these, some of them 
we can hold it and say, look, we're going to have another round. We'd mm. like to work with you on your application or work with others to support you in your application. Mm. I think. Yeah. Okay. 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 Zero waste. Well, that's capex. So that's, that's just capex. So straight, nope. straight out low for technical capex expenditure. And there again, if they can think of some other way of, you know, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Who's next? So, um, Yvonne de Mille, so this, is the kite, this is the kite lady. Who oh, uh, yeah, Andy, yeah, Andy, Andy also yeah. said, Andy also said that he hadn't spoken to her, but she said she'd spoken to other teachers. Yeah, and Hamish yeah. was the deputy principal. He would have spoke. He would have yeah. spoken to Andy about it, surely. No, nah, oh, well, it depends yeah. what 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 speaking to them is. Yeah. If she's just gone, oh well, I yeah. could do this, and they would have thought, well, that might be good. Mm. Maybe not realizing that she was going to charge for it. <laughs> yeah, that was why I asked that question. Of what, what's a thousand dollars of fees exactly? Mm -hmm. um, the oh, funny thing oh. is, is that we ideally we're not really supposed to. Um, fund the materials, but we should be funding the fees. But again, as that whole thing, are we funding it to pay her? Mm. Um, from an OPG point of view, we're perfectly fine if this Rukaku thing doesn't happen. Um, it's not not essential for the um, kite festival. Because um, you did you who had the comment from Andy regarding? No, Yvonne's application. Yeah. We were yeah. ringing when we were all ringing when we were all here. That's remember? right. Yeah, and, and he, he said wasn't interested saying, in it. You know, go fly your kite. No, he hadn't heard. He oh, hadn't, no. heard, he hadn't, he hadn't heard anything. Okay. The other teacher so, she mentioned is the one that's special education teacher at college. Mm. Mm. So what would the reason be? Yeah, I actually. We don't want to. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, I mean, parts um, of me does like does like this, but a thousand dollars though. How much labour and how long is it? Yeah, two we don't know how many hours that is. A thousand dollars for yep. her labour. Mm. Yeah, and we don't know how many hours she's that a, she's is. Applied for nineteen hundred and seventy. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Is that a good reason? Unable to fund well, this time. Um, Mm. Are we allowed to say no interest from Otaki College? But yeah, geez, well, unfortunately, that contradicts what yeah. she believes. So that'll potentially cause an mm. argument. Mm. Um, Maybe we need more. Um, well, we, we're not. We well, need we're, we're not funding her fees from the schools. Mm. <clears throat> Well, we don't uh, wish to. Yeah, we don't wish to. What kind of gloves cost 160 bucks? What Very kind of gloves do you wear yeah. when Yeah. I could give her a pack for free, depending mm -hmm. on the gloves. <laughs> yeah. I think with that one, given that Andy Fraser said no, yeah. we would probably rely on the fact that um, college After, principal. So we could, well, we could just say on, on information from the principal at the college. Yeah, basically. that's great. Right. Upon talking to the principal at the college, who yeah. didn't, you know, didn't feel it was a good. Well, hadn't would've. hadn't um, been engaged in conversation with her, I think. Yeah. Well, Andy hasn't because we spoke. I spoke to him when you were all here. Remember? Yeah. Whether other teachers yeah. had or not, that's beside the point. We spoke to the principal, and the principal was the head of the college. No matter what any other teachers said. Mm. I suppose the only other thing is if there is disengaged kids and it's a project that they then go to get go and fly kites and have fun, it could be beneficial. Oops, you're frozen. I don't know. It How much can we go back to, you maybe need to have the half of it the school. for the materials rather the than thing, the labour? The thing is... Is that, Janice, is that CapEx if we're just paying for materials? Why would we necessarily... Turned into assets because they're just kites that'll potentially. I don't get. think that that is in, in in my opinion that is not in the same league as play, paying for um, a, a, kitchen. A, a kitchen or a yeah. bathroom or a yeah. roof replacement. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. 
But the, but the thing is, we have spoken to Andy and he said yep. no. So if we fund her and then she then goes to the college. And they say no. And they say no the again. Um, you know, we, we actually, yeah. I don't yeah. think we can do it on, on, the, on those grounds because we have okay. spoken to Andy and we were yep. all here. Oh, well, we, let, we, let, let's, let's leave it at that then. Okay. Yeah. Okay, elevate all tucky. Oh, it's oh, Cat no, Light Orchestra. Light Orchestra. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, we've Cavity said yes Lights. to those. Oh, yeah, sorry, yes. We need yeah. to move them. Yeah. Cavity, Cavity Lights Orchestra. Well, I'll move that one. I'll see Someone that. Someone it, please. Okay, yeah. thank you. Any discussion? No, all those in favour? Aye. 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 So, three. Right, where are we up to now? Elevate. Uh, Maori uh, Land Charitable Maldi Trust. Land. Oh, so, is it? so we'd agreed to give them the five thousand dollars for the workshops oh. and the Kai Collective. Well, so, yeah. so it's for workshops and Kai Collective. Yeah, oh, but, uh, yeah, Kai Bosch project workshops. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah, we need um, we need some. We need to actually have sort of some. I don't know some sort of feedback or. The or person. Or something that, that, that they have actually used it on workshops and hasn't gone towards the yep. kitchen. Well, that's... Oh, well, I'll go. I'll work, with, that's a, do I'll work with Tanya. Yeah. That's fine. That'll be stipulated. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah. So who's going to move and second that? I'll move it. Yeah. I'll second it. Yep. Cool. Right. Next one. Elevate. I struggle with this when we've got all these other things going yeah. on and they've oh. got money. They've had a lot of money. And I know, you yeah. know, maybe they've spent it really well, but they've had a lot of money. They've spent um, $210,000 because you had, they had $300,000. That's a lot of money on, do you know what? <coughs> yeah, I'm... I'm a no because I've still got the money in the bank. Okay. So your reasoning would be still have still have funds. Yeah, there's still funds available. Um, yeah, there's still funds available. This this fits into the remit, the purpose they were given the money. And if they run out in a year's time, we've got another twenty thousand dollars and they need nine thousand dollars to carry on their work, I think then we look at it again. But at the moment, it's not very nice towards other people who we're not giving money to if we're no. giving money to someone with $90,000 in the bank yeah. that have had $300,000. Yeah. Okay. okay. Do we want to come back to that Osaki College one? And we were talking uh, about? Because we, we were thinking about perhaps giving them something, weren't we? Just yeah. being mindful that they, <laughs> that they um, the standing... Um, <laughs> agreement that's been this training and that the Otoki College can put a, a numerous grant applications yeah. in. So um, over the three years they have received some money. So just so this, this isn't just the college though, this is the whole thing. <coughs> yeah, this is Tipuna Oranga Otaki. It's not it's not just it's not just all yeah. College. And Tipuna Oranga have received funding from our board as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're right, Marilyn? Oh yeah. Yeah, just dying quite quietly. Yeah, yeah. Just, just do it quietly in a corner, Marilyn. <laughs> right. Oh, if I go quietly in a corner now and go to sleep, you'll have to wake me up when the score. <laughs> okay, so that's a no, and the reason being, which one oh, are we talking about? It wasn't a no. We just college. It, oh, I, yeah, I wasn't yeah. saying a no. I was just saying leave it. And we'll come back to it. Yeah. Okay. But I think we, dream we catcher. Saying, yeah. Dream yeah. Catcher. That's catcher. Catcher. That's capex. That's and capex. also, I think your point was very good, Cam. How many members? And it works out about 40 bucks per member. Yeah, but also, it. there was also the side of, well, it's actually only going to improve the lives of 40 people. Mm. I mean, that's not a huge amount. It's not the whole community. It's not actually benefiting yeah. the whole community. Yeah. No. Or even, or even, or even a, a, a medium part of the community. Graham Fox. Minuscule. Graham Fox. Yep. Good ideas. Zero. But zero. No. Um, and um, just it, the plans, plans don't seem very um, 
Yeah, very unclear plans. Mm. He hasn't got any plans. So it's quite theory yeah. It's quite. There's, a, there's some. There's some good ideas there. Yeah, I'd like to see who would be working with for yeah. this. I wouldn't. Yeah. He actually doesn't have a plan. It's all kind of. He's just clutching. I'm its just. Yeah. Really. Mm. I'd like to try this. I'd like to try this. And yeah. There's no, yeah. No I know, but he's not going to do it. He's going to let other people do it. He's just going to coordinate it and yeah. get the money. And yeah. $500 to go up to Hastings or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And it's not, not $500. I don't, think, I don't think he's allowed to go petrol. up to Hastings at the moment anyway. Why? No, we won't discuss that here. No, we won't discuss that in this. Yeah. So. Um, okay, so back what to... What have we spent so far? Oh, 10, 7. Mm. So technically, well, what about the hard pie wellness? Um, no, what was the other one? The the girl, she's not there. Which girl? Oh, which girl? There was a, there was a few ladies there. Really? Yeah. Which one? Kim, Kim Tasker. Yeah, we've done yep. that. Yeah, we've that, done that. That was that was um. That was Queenie Ricka, Ricky Hanna's. That was yeah. High Pie Wellness, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that is High um, Pie Wellness. Yeah. Oh, okay, yep. We're going to yeah. look at her coming back. Mm. School supporting, sorry. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so maybe she's going to apply in the next round. Okay, um, so so are we taking uh, well, the, the combined schools, that's a no, and the reason being? What combined schools? Sorry, what are you talking about? Taking college. To Puna or Ranga. Well, we haven't said no. We're, we're oh, going to come okay. back to it and see whether we're going to get well, that's some money. Well, we're back to it now because that was the last. Yep. This is the last one. <laughs> I keep on wanting to scroll on the screen tomorrow. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I've got I, I, think, I can't spell apply. A P P L Y. Round. Oh my yeah, goodness! Fine. Apply again in next round. So that's done. Right. What are we doing yep. with this one? Uh, right. Um, so that money they've applied for was for is that six months wages. I'm just trying to find it here. So if we gave them half of that, that's three months of wages. So mm. they did get, they did get some money. Oh, yeah. Somewhere that's they had a Fano educator navigator. Yeah. They had three roles. They got um to put it on, got some money for, and they had three roles and one was the it was all about truancy, um and you know, connecting with families to see why kids are truant <laughs> or not coming to school. But I suppose any amount of money is going to help that problem. Yeah, I, I don't quite get the table, though. They say they've got 25 grand of income from the Ministry of Education. That's what it is, yeah. So Wage, wages for six months is 25 grand. And then they've got this $5,000 figure for something. Mm. And then they apply for 20, which doesn't match up either. I don't quite understand what that five thousand is. It's almost like that's five thousand should have been income rather than yeah. Costs. I, I think there's been a mistake in these maths somewhere. Why is it yeah. much? Yeah. So the way because the way they're presented, they 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 are covered mm. for six months. I suppose they want to extend it. I think, yeah, so I, think, I think that's that. I think that that's yeah, the that's, idea that yeah, they've got the six months and they want to carry it on. Yeah. So if wages for six months is twenty five, so three another three months would be twelve and a half. Yeah. Have a wages, Janice. I don't think that's specifically excluded. It would be. No. Uh, it is in some grant. Um, in, it, it, within the criteria of some grant programs across community boards and councils, but unless you specified that that was excluded um, in the specific criteria you established for your funding here, I, I would say I think it's operating expenditure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another question, Janice, the, the, the money we have to give away, is that including GST or plus GST? Um... Twenty thousand plus GST is two thousand uh, twenty three thousand. No, I got my maths right. Yeah. Uh, the the um. I don't think it is. I don't think I. I don't think um. 
uh, you could inclusive. use GST to try and um, increase the size of the fund. The, the <laughs> I, I, I wasn't actually trying yeah. to increase the size of the funding. I was just trying to get clarification because some of these people are including and excluding them. The total amount that you would grant um, yeah. would be Just the, the forty yeah. grand. Yeah. yeah. Is it GST exempt? Uh, how's that normally treated for grant applications, Samara? So, in my totals, I only put what the amount is. I don't put it with GST, so that gets taken off. It. So be inclusive. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Um, so, does anyone have any suggestions? What? Like, uh, do we want to give these guys some money? Right. Well, that's the big question first. If it's going to keep kids in school or or, or mm. get them back to school, yes, absolutely. Like, truancy yeah. is a huge well, problem. I yeah. know we've all but, talked to about it and to various other school principals too. So, I certainly wouldn't do the whole 20. I'd be happy to do the 12, 5 or even a bit less or even 10. What if we did 10? Because I'm sure if they can make it successful, they mm. can then apply for more. So the Ministry of Education, um, education, well, we education run yeah. out. Yeah. And then if they can keep it rolling while they apply for more mm. for another three months or whatever, they might be able to get more money for mm. the program if they can prove it's working. Yeah. Yeah. Because, Samara, are we actually publishing, publicly publishing? The amounts that each one has got yeah it's public document yeah so we will have to probably justify why we didn't give the full amount because as you can imagine we're not spending the full 40 grand so someone could come and say well you only gave us 10 grand but you had money left why why only 10 yeah but we do want to have funding I'm not saying that, Shelley. It's more that how do we justify the fact that we're not giving them the Well, I, I don't think we actually do have to justify it, can we? Just say that okay. our decision was that we, we decided that we would give you $10,000 towards helping you. Yeah, that's cool. You yeah, do have so, to be um, wary, though, because there's a couple of grant applications you've talked because you're not funding people's wages mm. earlier, in the, earlier in the applications. Yeah, and that's yeah. Uh, a concern. Um, the other thing is we can justify it by saying that we wanted to retain some money so we could work with either some of these applicants or other applicants on initiatives in the future. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good way to say it. Or also, we'd like to see the results from the program before we would look at giving them more funds. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So well, that would be a good one. That would be a good one for, for the college to say that we would like yeah. to see mm. some results yeah. or some or some feedback on the program that they've been running before we considered funding more. Mm. Yeah. So are you giving them anything? Yeah. So we're giving uh, them 10, 10 grand. 10. Yeah. Does everyone agree with 10? Yeah. 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 Okay. I move that we give the college 10 grand. Anyone's yeah. going to second it? I second oh, that. Well. Thank you, Cam. No more discussion on it? All those in favour? Aye. 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 Okay, carried. Do we need to do a resolution that we are not funding the other ones? Like as a whole? Yeah. I think we're finished, haven't we? Yeah, we have. We'll yeah. have to. Um, we've got to have names beside people. I don't mind working with that young girl who okay. wants to go fishing. Okay, resolution. I'll, we need I'll, to do a resolution for all the declined ones. Yeah. I'll put that forward. Yeah, I'll second it. <clears throat> we can be the nasty ones, Marilyn. We'll be the bad cops, good cops, bad cops. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to work out now who will? I can't see your full screen. Um... No, I can't. So, oh, so are we? Are we giving the good news to them as well or just the bad news to the bad news ones well one of us has to work with the people who are successful anyway yeah yep. yeah well because well, well, do you want me to just in, sa in saving time do you want me to tidy up this document send it out, send it out. tomorrow then mm. you'll need to come um, make decisions um who your contact obviously i'll need to follow up with the um payments for the a successful Grant application, grant applicants. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. what's 
Uh, hold on, let's have a, let's have a look at the calendar. Um, is, are you all guys free tomorrow, early tomorrow? What time are you finish work, Shelley? 5.30, but I can get on the phone. We haven't been busy. Okay. Would you guys, we, we'll get together tomorrow about 5.30 and just whip through them quickly? Oh, yeah, 5.30. I'm going to the movies actually tomorrow, so I won't be. Oh, okay. Well, what, what time? What, what, I can tell you now, I'm happy to I'm happy to ring the Tiffany Mayheader Richards. Um, yep. Could you zoom out a little bit tomorrow? Just... Yeah. Um, everything's a little bit squished. Oh, damn. Because I've got the shit. I can't see my... Uh, hold on. Ugh. Is it yep. zoomed, zoomed down the bottom? I can't. Just, be, because I've got the shared screen on, it's everything <laughs> covered. Okay. That's one of it. All right. Hold on. I'm happy, I'm happy to do Jamie and RSA. You know, uh, zero waste and RSA. And I'll bring up happy my to, so happy to do those two. Um, shit, let's shit. go through the nose first. So Laura Lavery, who wants to ring her? Who's on with she? Um, oh, hold on, I'm sorry. Oh, I'll take the promotions group. No, hold on. No, I can do. I get. I'm going to do the negatives first. We're going to do the nose first. Why don't we just work through okay. the list? Okay yeah. then. I take. Well, you do. I take promotions, Cam. Yep. Doesn't you know, do you know someone there, Cam? Uh, yeah. Is there a, so. a conflict? Is there a conflict there, though? No, I'm, but well, I, I, I think well, decisions made. I think you can well, actually, in know. terms of monitoring, but but are we also assigning the person who's going to monitor the project? It probably shouldn't be me. Then. I don't know that you can because you don't no, know can't. who's going to be around the table when it's delivered. No, no, um, no, I think that I think the piece that you're talking about now is communicating um, yeah, the, the outcome of their decision. And if you need to, if you want to indicate that the that that you think there's value in working with them um, to if working with people who are unsuccessful at this round to see if if they could modify their applications or join up with some other groups at this stage, that's only a suggestion that you could make. Um, yeah. And I think, uh, unless you want to do yeah. some mahi between now and when you come out of office on the 14th of October, um, by all means, fill your boots. But um, that, yeah, that may I'm also not... be something better. It's really just okay. contact, isn't well, it? Mm. Yeah. Well, put me down for contacting OPG. Okay. Yes. I'm happy to do the next four Laura, Woke, Bryony, and Pat Atena. So I'm happy to okay. run them. Okay, well, I'll do Energize. I don't mind doing Dagny, what's McCallitz. You're doing Tiffany, kids aren't you? Um, and just to let you know, the kids need stads. They've just returned the $500 from the event that they couldn't put on. So that gives the new board more money, another 500 to spend. Oh, good. Hmm. Okay, look, I, look, I'll tell you, I'll do. I'll do Harpie as well. Yeah. Because yep. they're working with um, Māori land. And what I'll about do... Tiffany and. I'll do Tiffany. Uh, me. Okay. Yeah. Ring well, I can do, do. I'll do RSA. I'll do Kim Tasker. And no, I'm going to do her, Kim Tasker. <laughs> Are you doing? Yeah. That one she as well. Are you them. doing her and Tiffany? Okay. Yeah, I don't mind. Her zero Tiffany. waste. Okay. Right. I'll do zero yep. waste. RSA. Hold on. Let me keep going. Cavity lights. What about your uh, Avon? I'll do elevate. Um, I'll do Yvonne. And dream okay. and dream catcher. There you go. Hold on. Who's doing company like Chris? Me. I will. Shelley. Who's Elevate? Me. Or take the college. I'll do that. I'll speak to Andy. Because I've got to talk to him about something else. Dreamcatcher. Anyway. Yeah, I'll do that as well. Oh, and You're taking on, Chris. <laughs> who wants so to I'm bring... leaving Graham Fox to somebody else. Yeah. I'll do him. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, really, Marilyn? Okay. If anyone else wants one of the ones I'm doing. Well, he already knows that I wasn't very supportive of it, so I'll come and <laughs> so I'll just, um, So who was doing Dreamcatcher? Was that Chris? Or Me. Me. I'll give them a ring. I'll send that out tomorrow because okay. I'll need to tidy it up. Yeah. Cam, if you want to do some of the, if I've, if, do you think I've taken on? Sorry, can I have another look at who I was doing? I'm happy to let someone else uh, do some of them. At the moment, Shelley, you're down for Tiffany and, and Kim Tasker. And Tanya. Right. I'll send it oh, out yeah. first thing tomorrow morning. Yeah, cool. Oh. 
Yeah, I'm only down to two, but it's been a yep. marathon. Mm. Oh, yeah. you've still got more to go. We've still got a bit to go yet. So come on, guys. At least you don't have to drive all the way home anywhere, guys. No. <laughs> I think the latest of my 14 years with the board, I walked in the door at quarter to 12. No. So that's not that's not a challenge. No. She's already oh. in the and door. You got, so and you got no matter. driving time, so you got a that advantage. Okay. That's right, just confirmation so of minutes anyway. Yeah, so we've done we've done all the applications, funding, done all that. Okay, the confirmation of minutes we're up to, are we? Yep, I'm happy to put forward that. Okay, are true was, uh, take, hold on a moment, copy. hold on a moment. Copy. Um, take the orders read, yes. Would somebody like yes. to move the true and accurate copy of the last meeting, please? That would Thank be me. You, Cam. Who would like to second that? Yeah. Thank I'm... you, Marilyn. Yeah. Any discussion on the minutes or any matters arising from the minutes? Nope. No. All those in favour? Aye. Thank you very much. Didn't get to say aye. 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 <laughs> aye. Okay. Right. We are now up to matters under action. Yeah, we'll do our, our members' business right at the end, I think, because it's sort of it could be a good buy from you and a good buy from me and all that sort of stuff. So matters under action, Samara. Um, well, I did make a promise. Um, uh, one of the ones was about the Wi-Fi tower. Um, yeah. I've done some <laughs> reworking on that and they're just waiting for approval in the next week. So hopefully that should be going in the next or so after the actual approval Wi-Fi will be in place. No. Oh, they need to get it installed so the approval needs to come from one of the uh, gm at council um he's okay. back in the office in a week and a half so then that should go okay okay that, I never is, that is progress that's cool yep um that was probably the only update um the heroitai signage um oh, we were looking at dates but um shelly did suggest and i don't know um about how if you want to leave it to the new board to have a discussion around the signage um yeah well we we discussed that um yesterday the three of us um, and and gareth's I, happy I, to talk to the board yeah. whenever so that could yeah. be something yeah. that starts I, I, I just i just personally think it's probably better for the new board to actually i um, mean there's no yeah. point us anything i'm conscious now of that, just that, that might, putting yeah. it off again mm, that's right so it would be nice if we had thing. some kind of input into it. It's been a um, mm. big bear been on there for a long time. So right? long. It has been, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it would be nice well, to have some kind well, of we'll, meeting before the election so we can at least say this is what we would like to see. That meeting that I suggested at four o'clock, it could it, it would only probably be a half an hour one. I mm. set it up for an hour. It's on, on Monday. Oh, one of the dates that there was two yeah. dates I provided. Oh, Monday. Well, Wednesday, Wednesday's no good. We're doing that meet the candidates, and I've really got to get to the RSA early to help set up. So are we talking about this Sorry, Monday, Monday? Monday. Monday the 19th. I'll resend out an email. Yeah. At, what, oh. at what time? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Oh, it was right. a phone meeting, though, wasn't it? I can I'll join be, by Zoom. If yeah, well, I'll, the yeah, well, I will, I'll, yeah. Be, I'll be joining by Zoom because I'll be in Mungaraki. Okay, so I'll send a, out a, a Zoom meeting. Oh, cool. It was a Teams, but I can make it yeah. a Zoom. I'll send out yeah. an email tomorrow. Yeah. Terrific. Cool. Fantastic. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, right. <laughs> okay. Okay, folks. Well, this is sort of the end of the end of our, our triennium. And what, no, no public excluded minutes? No, no, no public excluded. <laughs> and um I just like to well, well, I'll just go through the stuff that I've done. Basically, it's not been a lot over this last month, but I've been to council meeting and a few briefings, and we had a very successful um, quiz night at the RSA, raising funds for the Rotunda, which was a lot of fun. We had over 100 people there. It was just amazing, absolutely amazing. We raised 12000 and $1,280, which was really good. So... On saying that, um, it's been a pleasure working with you all over the last three years. No matter what the election results are after this election, I oh, this is my last meeting as chair of the board. I will not be putting my name forward to be chair of the board. Um, and hopefully the board works really, really well. Um, 
And as I say, we, unfortunately, you know, the last three years have been really tough with COVID. We haven't managed to achieve anywhere near as much as we achieved in the previous three years with the restrictions we had. And, and just the fact that we just couldn't get out and about and, and do things and get things covered off. And the staff were pressed for stuff, things as well. They were working from home. They had people off ill. So all in all, I think we, we managed pretty well over the time and we're all smiling again now and there's no more masks. So that's it for me. Thank you very much for three years, you guys. It's been a pleasure working with you all. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. And thanks for your leadership. Thank you. All right, does anyone else have anything they wish to say? Speak now. <laughs> Um, I've attended a couple of council meetings. There was a one particular one where they um, agreed to put the EWI representatives onto the various committees. That was really cool to see the um, EWI representation coming forward. Um, I did ask the question and, and Janice did say no, that, we, that we're not allowed an EWI representative on the community boards, um, but we'll work for some other way of um, incorporating that. Um, not Why a great not deal. Allowed? I don't it's, it's, under, it's actually under under laws. It's a statute. I Nick um, confirmed it as well. That With your in-house legal, legal counsel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, 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 by law, you can't appoint. Um, you can't appoint with voting rights an additional member to the community board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but outside of that, I have really enjoyed my year and a bit as a as the, as junior team junior. Um, and coming on board and, and learning what the community board does from the inside. Um, it convinced me to put my name up again, put my head above the parapet. Um, so look forward to seeing everyone after the, after the elections. Yeah. Thank you, Cam. Marilyn. <laughs> Ta -da! Well, what about Marilyn, eh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, I've I've enjoyed my last three years. It's been busy for me, but it's been good. Um, and thank you all for for being my teammates. Um, I wasn't going to stand again at these elections, but I've got some portfolios that I really enjoy doing, and I don't want to lose them. So I thought, well, I'll throw my hat in the ring. Um, but I'm not really campaigning, so hopefully I'll get on. But who knows? We'll see. What will be will be, um, and and if I don't get on those those portfolios that I don't want to lose, those committees have all don't, they've all said they don't want to lose me either. So I'll continue to do those and and report back to the community board anyway. So you're not really whichever way it swings, you won't get rid of me, right? <laughs> we, we just won't have to pay for you. Yeah. <laughs> we just won't have the council won't have to pay you. No, even though you give me a bottle of wine. <laughs> Shelley. I've got nothing to report. Okay. Working hard. Well, I, once again, thank you. And thank you very much to Janice for the, the time. Have you been with us all three years? I can't remember. We've had, some, we've had quite a few yeah, sort of nicely. many years. And Samara, thank you once again for all the hard work you've put in over the years for our board. We really appreciate everything you have done for us. You've been our rock and you've just been, you've just been fabulous. Nothing's ever been too much trouble. You've always done it with a smile and a happy yes and everything. And Fiona, hopefully tonight hasn't put you off because they don't normally go this long, believe you me. So you thank you. I just, got, I just got Tony to pour me a glass of wine. So here's to all you guys. Thank, Thank you very much. And Thank I won't everyone. be I won't be a stranger. I'm still at council and I'll probably be at the next couple of meetings just to ease Fiona into um in-person meetings um and support her. Um but thank you for your kind words. Thank you for your presence. Um it was much appreciated and I will miss you all, but I'm still oh, around. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you, everybody. Okay. So are you gonna close the meeting? <laughs> Yeah, I know yeah. the meeting officially at court. I think this is our really got to be our latest 11 15. Good lord, yeah. good night. Yeah. <laughs>